Hey guys, welcome back to the 44 podcast. Um, today we've got a very special guest, Matthew Kelly. Uh, I'm very excited for this one. This is someone who, e-commerce wise, I'd say definitely my journey, someone who I've looked up to quite quite a lot. Um, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, literally like, I don't know, I've always seen you as like the guy who's a couple years ahead of me in terms of where mm. I want to be, uh, brand building wise, all of that. And yeah, but if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, what it is exactly that you do, what you've done. Yeah, for, well, I guess, obviously, yeah, I started my pod like four months ago, so maybe some people, it's crossover audience-wise, um, never really been on the other side of it, which is why I want to do this. Mm-hmm. I suppose, yeah, in summary, um, fucking e-com entrepreneur, I've been doing it like properly since I was about 18, 26 now, getting old. Um, I feel like I've done so many different things in e-com, which is probably good and bad. Yeah. Like, I've never focused on one thing, but I've got a depth of experience. yeah. And like in the highs and lows as well, which we can get into. Um, I guess most notably in the past few years, built two pretty big brands, Midnight City, neither of which I'm involved in anymore. Got that to like multi seven figures in revenue. Then Neon Beach, which is like the fucking famous catastrophe. Staple story, <laughs> staple story. <laughs> which got to like eight figures in revenue and then came crashing down, but it was a fucking good learning curve. Um, now I'm working on my next brand, Space Goods, which I'm fucking rocking. Hasn't launched yet, but with this one, I'm trying to take it to the next level, get it to like nine figures and shit. I mean, everyone fucking says that, but we can get into that later on. Um, And I guess prior to that, yeah, like stuff I've not really shared on my pod is like previous to like Midnight and Neon, because I did probably like four years. I actually had a brand, a clothing brand before I even got into dropshipping. So I kind of went like brand, dropshipping, traveling, then went back to the brand building space. And then, yeah, fuck, it's been a journey. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like reflecting on shit I've done. I, th- I think it's useful. Like, I never used to put content out that intentionally. It was kind of like just built a bit of a niche personal brand following. Like, even like you say you knew who I was, it's like, well, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then obviously the pod, yeah, recently started sharing more. And yeah, I'd, I've come to the point now where it's therapeutic for me to talk about no, shit. Exactly, yeah. Particularly because of like the bad shit that I went through. And then I was like, fuck, people actually really are interested in it's this. It's very insightful. It is I very mean, even, even watching well, your podcast. And it's just fun speaking to people because yeah. otherwise you sit on a fucking laptop all day. Just staring at a screen. It's something to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess in some way I'm, I'm an e-com entrepreneur. Um, I would say I'm a creative at heart that mm. has figured out how to make money doing stuff that I like rather than business person that has to like outsource yeah. the creative side. Like, for me, it started like designing logos when I was like 16. That's literally where it came oh, from. Dope. Like. And then I was really into music. Like I had a music YouTube channel and shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like I'd probably say, in summary, I'm just a bit of a fucking weird creative entrepreneur that's still very much figuring it out. Like I'd, I do not position my personal brand as someone that's made it because I fucking haven't made it. I've had highs and lows. It's in the process. Yeah. But mm. I think that's what people want to know more of because, like, you get all these podcasts, these big, bigger podcasts like Diary of a CEO, which, don't get me wrong, are great. But when every fucking guest is a billionaire, I think it's a bit less relatable. Yeah, 100%. And there's a lot of underground people, probably like myself included, that have got interesting stories, I think, that are probably more relatable I feel to like 99% of people. With, with the whole Neon Beach thing, right, this is like, it's something where there's so many lessons that you must have learned from that and so much like value that you can give. Cause I feel like even the fact that let's say it didn't go well, right? In the end. Very fucking bad. <laughs> but that's like, that's, that's key. You can obviously, you now know that yourself, that's like the, the probably the best learning experience you can probably get ever mm. business wise to be honest with you because you had a successful business that was huge and then obviously yeah yeah, yeah we can go into that we can go into <laughs> this, this is what yeah. i was going to say because obviously even myself you know I've, I've watched quite a lot of your stuff about neon beach and all that you know talking about it but again if you want to sort of maybe just explain neon beach yeah for, i mean do you want to play this chronologically because i want to go back to that yeah 100 percent. because we'll mention this first even obviously you started e-commerce with dropshipping right yeah yeah this is pretty much what, what we do yeah yeah, so, well, I, I guess, yeah, the Neon story, quickly. I mean, I, episode one of my pod, kind of probably 70% shared what happened. Mm. I mean, it's probably even more traumatic than it sounded. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, in summary, what happened there, I guess, in, like, a one-minute nutshell was um, with that brand, scaled it super quick, literally got it from, like, zero to a million a month in, like, six months. I mean, ultimately, it was drop shipping, but the nature of the product is drop shipping it's you know yeah. it's a custom product yeah so i don't really count it as like kind of dirty drop shipping mm. it was like branded drop shipping you know yeah. I mean? like dedicated factories all that shit um 
yeah, scaled it too quick. I was running it alongside midnight. So like mid, mid, like summer 2020 was a fucking great time. Like biggest months I've ever done for both brands. Everything's going super well. I was lit. I thought like, you know, I fucking made it. Like give me a, mm. a year or two. We'll yeah. sell both these brands and we're done. Exit and started. Yeah. Everything's planned out. And then, yeah, I guess looking back now, I mean, scaled it too quick in hindsight. Had zero employees, was zero like proper employees in the UK and shit. It was all like freelancers, yeah, agency stuff, so which is fine. It was yeah. probably like the biggest business in terms of like people in the UK on the ground, like ever, like genuinely. I, I mean, Mad. it's got to be up there. Like it was fucking big. Like the first year it did 8 million quid and then Midnight did two That's and a half. Nice. So the business did 10 million quid in 2020 yeah. with just me as a director. Um, and then, yeah, long story short, I moved all the production from China to the UK um, think like trying to improve the experience because it's all right from China, but mm. like COVID was perfect timing for that sort of product. It's a good step to take. It is for the yeah, progress, but it made shipping terrible. Nice. Yeah, so like yeah. it wasn't, it was manageable, but it was like, you know, six weeks shipping, whatever. It was getting like three star reviews and shit. And I thought we'll bring it to the UK, mm. put like half a million quid up front into this UK factory, which in hindsight didn't do enough due diligence on. They bit off more than they could chew basically. And then, effectively just couldn't fulfill any of it and they yeah. had their own problems because of covid because they're a b2b supplier i was left with two million quids worth of orders that disappeared oh, which is quite a lot because the aav was like 300 quid so it was like six and a half thousand orders to so do the maths um obviously social media heavy yeah. yeah we had this thing with love island that went up so there was like tv campaigns going out this is november Man. 2020 when it started to become a problem and yeah like fucking hell you start getting chargebacks Jeez. your facebook ads what was the payment disabled. processor like fucked yeah i had to change it like three times but Jesus. and you know, yeah obviously customers don't care about that they don't yeah. realize yeah, that yeah, yeah. and then you know a picture of me comes out with a flash car into like some facebook group yeah no oh, no it started to get very messy like the daily mail got involved and shit it was horrible horrible time like november to february 21 i'd say it was <clears> like peak <throat> issues <clears throat> and it yeah like the business fucking lost like two million quid in like four months yeah, and then long story short, basically got bailed out by a private equity fund, yeah. um, which I, which taught me a huge amount um, about that whole process. Like, learn what lawyers actually do day to day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, worked with them for six months and now sold my remaining shares in that. And, yeah, it kind of wrapped up a very bad situation and yeah. solved the problem at the expense of my probably mental health. No, I was going to say, I was going to tap into it because that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Throughout that, how were you coping like, mentally? That's, oh, that's I wasn't insane. Coping, no. to be honest. Um, yeah, it was a terrible time. Yeah. I think I've got PTSD from that, to be honest. Like, yeah, who, so, who so, wouldn't? Like, four honestly, to six month period yeah. primarily. Even even when there's little dropshipping issues, I'm always like, yo, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I can't yeah. imagine something on that yeah. scale. Yeah, the thing that made that really bad was it's one thing like the business going tits up thinking fuck like we're gonna run out of money but it's another thing having like m my face and my girlfriend's yeah, face yeah, at the yeah. time plastered still everywhere fucking about. plastered everywhere like this guy's a scam artist yeah oh. which couldn't be further from the truth um i mean that's always why would right, a fund right, bail you out if you're a scammer business, exactly. businesses have issues at the end of the day yeah you know what it I mean? was just such a public issue and it was made very public by like trolls and yeah. whatever and it was like the perfect oh, yeah. pr oh, yeah yeah, yeah days, exactly man. yeah yeah, I, I honestly think, like, health issues aside, probably doesn't get much worse as an entrepreneur. <laughs> like, no, genuinely. No, no. I, I've never heard of it. So even as an entrepreneur in general is, I would say, tough. Like Yeah, like, mentally, it's, yeah. it's not for everyone. Yeah, like, honestly, like, I was, like, suicidal about it at some points. Man, can't even imagine. But, yeah, like, I have some close mates that fucking, I spoke to you about it because they're all in, like, the e-com space. Yeah. yeah. But it was, even then, it's, like, still my problem ultimately yeah, yeah and like yeah. my ex-girlfriend who i was mentioning before mm. she moved in with me and she was really good she helped me a lot to be fair um but even then like i didn't tell her the full extent of issues which i, yeah. I regret to this day to be honest because i think it probably had a negative effect on what happened with that relationship but yeah it taught me a lot hardened me and yeah, definitely yeah. humbled me which i think was a good thing in many ways but you know, just get back on the fucking horse. You must go. be ready for anything now, business wise. Yeah, yeah like honestly, like, I don't, I don't think there's much that can stress me now. Yeah, I like obviously stress me, but not to the same extent. Was was there a lot of reflection? Oh yeah, yeah, like like time off sort of vibe. Well, yes, yeah, so I, sp I spent six months working with these guys, like March to September, like on like a good salary and shit. I had a, had twenty percent equity and 
like the new business they set up around that. But I knew from the start I was never going to do that long term. It was just like that was basically the deal. Yeah, they put the all deal. this money in to pay all the customers back, which was like yeah. two million quid in the end, by the way. And you know, that's money that could have come to me if the business hadn't gone wrong, hypothetically. But yeah. I, I had to put things right in that respect. So, yeah, and then there was a lot of reflection. I guess like it was, it was kind of weird because it was like, oh, fuck, I'm not like the leading business owner anymore. Like, mm. I felt like, oh, yeah. fuck, like I've got a nine to five now, kind of, in, in my yeah. own business. I, but that was what I had to do. And it taught me a lot. At the end of the day, at the end of the day yeah, it's, just, the right it's what you thought you had to do. Like, I guess you sort of got into a corner, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was literally like, well, if I don't do this, you know, if someone don't come in and bail it out, yeah, well, what's going to happen? Well, you you, fa- you face the music, I guess. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent on yeah. a big scale. So, yeah, very tough time, Damn. but definitely come out of that with a lot of learnings. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And like I feel like more world aware. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it, like, um, prior to Neon Beach, how did you actually like get into e-commerce in general? Yeah, going back, like the first e-com thing I ever had was. There's loads of different shit. This would have been like start of end of 2014, even like golden way, age. Way, yeah, way, Jesus, way back. Yeah. I, had, I had a clothing brand called Gentry Club. Mm. Like this, this was like way back. Like I bought, I worked in John Lewis in the summer and bought stock and like put a fucking logo on mm. a Gildan T-shirt and the yeah. kids in the year below, who ended up buying from my brand a few years later. By the way, so there's, yeah. there's no beef. <laughs> <laughs> he, they took the piss out of that and it, that was like my very first thing like didn't know what the fuck i was doing didn't sell anything like sold like 500 quid's worth and had like two rounds worth of stock yeah didn't have like ads running or any of that shit um then i had a leggings brand called wavy leggings this is when i was rowing at uni mm. that did all right they did like 10 grand in revenue with no ads so i was like oh, something works a little bit that's print on demand yeah then i guess moving on a little bit i came and i was, I was still in uni at this point so i like dabbling with a few things but wasn't really 100% into e-com yeah. yet. Experimenting so, here. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, a real yeah, business yeah. at that point. Um, and then like mid-2016, just before I left, ended up dropping out of uni, I discovered Facebook ads, I suppose, from like a fucking Facebook group. Started dropshipping ripped jeans back when like Geordie Shaw was popping. So I was in uh, uni That's a good Newcastle. time. That is a good yeah. time for that probably, yeah. So technically it was dropshipping to start with, but then I started doing like 30 grand a month in revenue while I was in uni. I was like, oh, wait a minute let's just stop going to uni. I had Possibly a little office easier. like this size in Newcastle while I was still at uni studying advertising, ironically. <laughs> then that became a brand when we started buying our own stock and we became a brand called Dusk. Right. So we had like Luke Hemmings from Five Seconds of Summer of massive band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that sort of shit. <laughs> he was buying our stuff. We started doing like Sherpa jackets, which yeah. was like a Fear of oh, God yeah. rip off. Yeah. And like looking oh, back, okay, okay. that was like ahead of its time it in, was in terms 100%. of like, it was actually like a legit fashion brand. Like we had, we moved to a bigger office and shit, which was like twelve hundred <laughs> square feet in That's the toffee yeah. factory. In was this still drop shipped or was no? Stock? This was like fully holding stock and yeah, everything. Yeah, like yeah. Using a third party warehouse. I'd have been twenty one. My mate got involved. He was like a year younger than me. He runs Saw with us agency now. So episode yeah, yeah, twenty three yeah. on my pod. Um, and then that would have been like February twenty seventeen. So I'd like stopped going to uni at this point. I think I told my parents that like, I'm just dropping out, and they were like, "Okay, fair enough, whatever." Yeah. But then. We kind of fell out, me and Ollie, who were running the brand at the time. Then we had a lawsuit over the name. Like, we oh, couldn't keep oh, selling it. No, no, no. And it, yeah, basically just yeah. faded. Like, we just had to stop selling stuff. Like, we sold off the stock and probably came out with a few grand each. I don't really remember. And then, like, summer 2017, this brings us to, I was like, well, fuck. I don't know anyone in e I'm not going back to uni. I've yeah. not really made any money. Yeah. I've got a bit of experience. I know Facebook ads now. So I got back into the dropshipping space, set up a few different stores, like, Back in the fucking golden era, I suppose. I remember I had a store selling leggings because I'd obviously done the wavy leggings thing, yeah, but yeah. I didn't want to do print on demand because the margins weren't big enough. Um, started scaling that. Then I went to, I started traveling like Europe by myself. Mm. I literally went on a two month trip by so myself. Traveling. It's on my vlog. Yeah. It's on my vlog channel if anyone wants to check that out. Um, golden times, I suppose, because I was just like, if I don't move and get out, what am I going to do? Sit you, at my parents' you house. You must reminisce on it a yeah. lot, all of them all of them times. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. then a real turning point was, this was all, I was in like Facebook groups and shit, and then there was like this event called the Ecom World Summit or some bullshit. Looking back, <laughs> it was such a scam. <laughs> like all the guys speaking there were like, it's like a mastermind. black hat cunts. But yeah. it was in Singapore, so I got like an economy flight to there. This was like September 2017, it would have been. And that's where I met. That, that I, f- I credit that as being like the turning point turning as point, meeting okay. people in e-com. I met a guy called Jordan who was like 18 at the time doing like a million a month drop shipping. Right. He now runs a brand called Gleaming. He's like one of my best mates. Um, he's like 23 now, I think. And yeah, a bunch of other guys. Yeah. And then 
it's kind of the butterfly effect because like you put yourself in a room like that and that was like my first exposure to like a different world like first time into asia first time i've met other people that mm. didn't just want to get a grad job yeah and then i went to bali like australia bali that was like two years of basically just i met these guys met more people bali was really good that's the best I place bet. to go yeah if you want to fucking network in my opinion really and it's just it's a great lifestyle particularly when you're like early 20s whatever making a bit is of money it all online. just like digital stuff is everyone just doing all digital stuff? shit like in, yeah, in yeah. changu yeah it's just yeah. nice weather pretty cheap to live in like i get messages saying what i want to like do my own thing where should i go just go to fucking changu in bali and i think right now it's quite difficult to get to but do the yeah, quarantine yeah. whatever yeah and yeah did that like spent pretty much 2018 20 rest of 2017 and 2018 like traveling all around the world like there's some some mad shit on my youtube actually <laughs> um yeah i had a few different stores i had one store where i was selling and i say stores because they were never intending to be like a brand or anything it's literally yeah, just like yeah. what can i make the most just money just out of chapters stores, right yeah. and yeah, i would yeah. just do free plus shipping like kitchen stuff i think oh, i mentioned this free plus <laughs> on, on the pod that what you listen time. to yeah 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 and like products like this fucking ice cube genie which was like two pounds man express i sell it for like 14 quid shipping them ones where they're just stupidly cheap to source yeah, so it's like it can't like not work where yeah like two pound cost per purchase on facebook like yeah and i just run like the same CPM page Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah what was the cpm like <laughs> oh i don't even know but it's cheap yeah yeah and it just worked and i got yeah i think i got that to like 500 600 grand a month in revenue probably making like 50 60 profit so the margins were slim but obviously at scale it's still a lot yeah money. yeah yeah um and then yeah kept doing that pretty much up until like the start of 2019 and then i was a bit like i started to see like facebook bringing in like feedback scores and shit it was getting a bit tougher like other yeah, get disabled and i was like well I've, i made some money now um definitely didn't spend it wisely on a lot of things like bought oh. a stupid car and shit mm. for the first time and then geez thinking about it, it's a long time now and then like march 2019 april 2019 even i moved to london with Fred and another guy called Seb, who I literally met through like friends of friends, are like fuck it, let's just get a group and like get a <coughs> hostel house. Were they all yeah. like in London? E-commerce. Yeah, both yeah, in e-commerce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Must have been sick. And then that's when I started midnight, and I was still drop shipping, but I was like almost went cold turkey. I was like, well, I've got money now, like I know I want to build a brand, and that was always what I wanted to so do. So take your time at that it's point. It's more creative. Yeah. It's more fulfilling. Like yeah. I wanted to do something I could potentially exit from. Like drop shipping was getting getting harder like the margins were slimmer and slimmer and slimmer mm. and like, it just wasn't fulfilling like i'd made a few hundred grand at this point like in the bank and i was like i really should have put that in ethereum by the way at the time <laughs> 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 and then yeah that kind of started like the next chapter i guess in my head which was yeah building midnight and then that went on to like 2019 was focused on midnight city jewelry got that to like a million quid in the first year which looking back is pretty good for a brand like especially in that space it's so competitive now um and then launched neon at the start of 2020 ran them both for 2020 which is obviously what i just spoke about mm -hmm. and then it kind of brings us to 2021 which is like the fucking learning year that was like a two steps back five steps forward sort of thing and then now i'm here so th that's kind of like a very yeah very expedited yeah, yeah, yeah. rundown well, so you, you've been in the game for a while now which which i guess yeah honestly i feel like i it's a shame i really should be retired by now if i was <laughs> smart because i see guys that have been in the game a lot less but I don't know, everyone, everyone's just Everyone's just different. got a different journey. Yeah. That's yeah. all that is, yeah. Yeah, so I've done a lot of different things. I've definitely built up experience in a lot of areas that I think is, yeah, is valuable now. Life lessons for real, yeah. yeah. What what so, I want to know is, what, what do you think of the dropshipping industry just at this current time now? Because obviously mm. it's been a while since you've even been involved in that, right? But people are still doing it, I guess. We're still in that industry. Yeah, honestly, like... I started going on like money Twitter a few months ago and I yeah. see all these like kids like <laughs> fucking, how, how old are you? I'm 18. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To me. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing like TikTok shit like organic, yeah, doing yeah, like yeah, yeah. 100 grand a month organically yeah, and crazy. shit. And yeah. I think fuck me, like trying the object syndrome. <laughs> so I think in summary, dropshipping is the single best way to get started in e-com if you have no money or experience. Yeah. Because yeah. it hopefully gives you some money if you do it well, but most importantly gives you some experience because like, I think the thing a lot of people look past with like online shit is like you actually have to have skills to be able to do it like it. Mm -hmm. i don't know like when i was maybe like 22 23 like when a lot of my mates from uni or whatever or like from home i think when i first got this audi r8 in 2018 i remember a lot of people started kind of noticing what i was doing mm. yeah it would have been when i went on that podcast that you listened to and like oh the, <coughs> whatever it's called <coughs> yeah yeah 
and that came out. And I, I remember that that went round like a uni group chat. And they're oh, like, what, no. what's this guy doing? And then loads of people f- from like uni and shit were like, oh, I want to do e com. And yeah. it's like, well, no, you don't want to do e com. You just want a car. Yeah. That's it, that's Shiny it. object syndrome. They're yeah, probably still yeah. saying now, oh, I want to do e yeah. Whereas for me, it was always a genuine passion because it came from wanting to design logos. Logos. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. like, you know, I only started making a bit of money from e com like three, four years in. Yeah. Like, yeah. It wasn't like. Exactly. And, and that was like compounded experience from like a clothing brand while I was in school. I think it was pretty much that first one I mentioned. Then the other brand, which did like six figs in revenue, but then we had to fucking close it down. So like, it's actually more than two brands I've run. I've run like a few different things. And then, yeah, yeah drop shipping. Like at that point, it was, to be honest, I just wanted to make money so I could travel and meet people. Yeah. yeah. And it was like the catalyst for learning and everything else. Freedom, but, um, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, freedom, yeah. And honestly, looking back now as well, I don't think that lifestyle's for me anymore because I'm a bit older, but like living in Bali, like making like 300 grand a year profit from a laptop. That must have just been insane. sick, yeah. Oh. But, yeah, I, get, I guess I wanted to get back into like, the brand building space to kind of do something more fulfilling. And obviously COVID fucked up travel for everyone anyway. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't want to be like island hopping, so to speak, yeah, yeah, these yeah. days. Although there are elements of me that still like gets the itch for that. Yeah. What was your original question? Dropshipping. But yeah, <laughs> I think dropshipping is the best place to get started, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, like, I guess I thought it kind of died out because of Facebook, but then TikTok... Yeah, it's been like the resurgence, the renaissance of dropshipping. <laughs> but is, but for is. me, it's like I'm now. Yeah, I guess I've mentally graduated to like I want to do something longer term because I've been there and done that. Yeah, and, and got the experience, and you know I could probably do dropshipping now, but it would just take away from trying to focus on a bigger thing. Yeah, there's there's no. I feel like you've so, outgrown it now. You know what I mean? You you you've done you've done your, your yeah part. yeah. I I think you just, you just learn a lot. By, by starting dropshipping yeah. and like you know you learn about cash flow customer service obviously ads website everything it's like it's like a fucking degree it's a, it's a, probably a much better degree i feel, I feel like business yeah yeah exactly it's like your baby isn't it and obviously yeah. with, yeah. with dropshipping like it's it's not hard at all to just start a store and start a business technically like it's so easy to literally yeah. just get a store made and just get it launched you can do it in a it's, it's, mainly, easier. it's mainly Easily. just mental barriers though to be honest yeah for the, for the majority of oh, people yeah. well a lot of people just think oh i've got to buy someone to make a logo I've got yeah. to, you know what i mean it's like yeah 100 percent. like i remember just doing everything myself yeah i remember distinctly being in barcelona in summer like may oh, 2017 <laughs> maybe june on that yeah. summer trip by myself and i was literally sat in the shittest airbnb just making a website to yeah. sell these leggings yeah like yeah. it was fu- mm. not glamorous at all but they're like obviously the glory days looking back yeah you know what I mean? definitely yeah to come um, up yeah like i think i read something on twitter and it says like when you look back at like the fucking struggle days it's, yeah, like, it's yeah. like the most beautiful but it's actually true it is so true like when you were doing yeah. drop shipping back then were you just doing facebook like, literally just facebook no, not even else. i mean there wasn't even too many other platforms like that was there wasn't didn't do google anything didn't do influencers nothing it's crazy like with uh neon beach like were you multi marketing like yeah that was different. more that was like heavily google and facebook it's actually more google than facebook um and a bit of like snapchat and shit didn't really do tiktok it was like slightly premature i felt but yeah that was more more broad because i'd built up that experience for like other platforms from like midnight and shit yeah yeah was was there a lot of money on the back end as well with that kind of brand yeah like big fat email list i think we're doing like 20 percent of revenue from email mm. really? you know all that sort of stuff too shabby um, like even organically, like if you turn the ads off, it would probably do a hundred grand a month because yeah. there's just so much eyeballs. Yeah, mm. and I mean, when it's, known, a, when it's, it's known. a product like that, you know, people don't buy it on impulse. They might see an ad and buy it nine months later. Did you ever do like PR or anything like that? No, I guess I got unintentionally a lot, a lot of negative PR. <laughs> I, well, I guess, I guess the Love Island was kind of PR. Because I've that, always that thought of that. Thing. I've always thought of like I mean, I've had offers. You know what I mean? Like when you get like emails, it's like mm. PR, or whatever. Yeah, I've never, I've never done it. I don't know. I think f- for my next brand. I was speaking to someone, they said I should definitely get into like the PR space from like a founder's perspective as well. Yeah. Because a lot of like these brands, and like I was saying before, like the whole strategic narrative, yeah. of, like getting a brand that can sell for like 5X revenue. Mm. Like mm. look at Gymshark, like how they've done that with Ben yeah. Francis. Yeah. It's it's such a great founder story. And like, mm. a, lo- a lot of big, big brands have it. Like Netflix has the story of, I think you didn't want to pay the fee of sending yeah. the disc back or whatever it was. And like there's, there's loads of similar examples. So yeah, I've been thinking about that a bit more, just from like a personal brand perspective, but also just from a business thing. Am I right in saying that you like paid to get like verification or something like that? 
Yeah. Like, yeah. I think yeah. I remember hearing a funny story. The smile comes out. <laughs> that's a dirty one. I, I think I mentioned that in like another pod, not the first yeah, one. I just, remember, I just literally just then it just came Basically, up. Basically, in summary, um, it wasn't verification actually. It was to get the username to get rid of code. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. it verification? Oh, it might have been okay, both. Okay. I think it was both. And then verification didn't work anyway. Yeah. So I paid five Bitcoin Ooh. off the record, no, no, which no, obviously no, no. now is <laughs> now is a bit lower than Painful. it was. But at peak, that was like 250 grand. And to get oh. fucking two oh. letters off a username for a brand that I'm no longer, <laughs> no longer even own. Oh, man. Um, You've had a tough journey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, so that's quite funny, but it is what it is. I mean, it's better than the guy who paid like, what, 10,000 or something for a pizza? 10,000 Bitcoin? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There's that, oh, yeah, that story yeah, yeah. that you just always <clears> hear. Yeah, so I, I just... I don't think it's worth paying for that shit. Nah. Like, very, I've, I've been scammed on verification as well, which was oh. a dirty story, but I'm probably not going to go into that in case he nah. watches. Nah. But, and, and people I know have as well for like th- three grand, five grand. One thing I remember, because obviously we had like a similar type of like store, same sort of niche, right? Mm. And I I was very like, we had like 15 million views on the ads. You know what I mean? There's like a lot of like eyes as well. Yeah. And I was getting hit up from like rappers and stuff. Like, oh, mm. let me get one. Then we got all of that. Yeah. Do you have any stories? Like, because I remember hearing what James said, Remy James, about yeah. with Chris Brown. Do you have like any like thing that happened in that sort of sense? Because I know I got like, scammed by rappers. Influencer stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a few. I mean, probably a notable one was with Midnight City. I did a collab with Jay Alvarez. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. like, I wanted to, I kind of wanted to change the brand from like, it was sort of like Love Island-y spec to begin with, like tattoo mm. models and yeah, shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Which I actually think in hindsight worked better. But I wanted to make it like Bali aesthetic, go a bit different. A bit like 2Js. There's a brand called 2Js mm. now that crushed that whole like Barcelona, like tanned vibe. Yeah. And yeah, I thought like Jay Alvarez is like the poster boy for this sort of shit. Paid him like 40, I think it was 45,000 pounds for three posts, which Jeez. is fucking insane. Yeah. Gosh, that was like a big chunk. This was like three years ago now. Um and it just didn't do anything. It wasn't a scam. I mean, oh, it yeah. did, you did post it, yeah. but it just, I thought this was going to blow up the website. And it just, and it just like literally would, didn't even notice. Yeah. I've had so, times like that where it's like, yeah, you just, it's just so weird. To, like, so I'm just so influences. reluctant with influencers now to just, just do like upfront promos. I yeah. don't know. Influencer, I've never had great, that great experience. Yeah. I think they're a longer term thing. <clears> you can like yeah. sponsor them. When you're like mm. a big, big brand where they just yeah. want to just mm. spunk money away. Yeah. And then like Neon used to send loads of, Science of people like Mia Khalifa was one. <laughs> no a, way. Big fonts, obviously, like I remember that being funny, but they just didn't post. A lot of them just take free shit and don't post. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. when it's like a three hundred quid product, that's kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But trying to think, if there's anything else major? Probably not really. That that was like the worst. Yeah. The money worst I spent like, yeah. and it didn't work. But influencer in. marketing, I don't know. It's a weird one. Is I, that I've never quite cracked it. I miss. Plan- I think very. Mm-hmm. Miss. You plan on doing that with the new the, with the new brand? Yeah, I think, but it'd definitely be like a longer term thing and like sponsoring someone long term, you know, like a proper mm-hmm. ambassador. Yeah, ambassador rather for the than brand. just a post. So I don't think posts work. Did you have any sort of like systems like that with Neon Beach, like ambassador program or anything like that, which you scaled? Yeah, Christ. I mean, it would have been a dirty Google Sheet. It wasn't anything yeah, fancy. Like, yeah, I, I've yeah, actually yeah. used like fancy softwares like Grin, and there's another one called, I think I tried influencer.com, which is Casper Lee's I think one. I've seen that, yeah. Um, don't know if I actually signed up with them, but. Yeah, and you pay all this money for these fancy platforms, but I just came to the yeah. conclusion that Google Sheet is the best mm. way that's, that's, that's yeah. what I do, like, just, like, Get a VA. email out re- out each VA Cold sort of handles it, but... Yeah, you, so you can overcomplicate things with, like, fancy softwares and yeah. shit. In, in a lot of ways, I, I remember I was paying, I'm not joking, like, six grand a month for this conversion rate optimization software called VWO yeah. for Neon, like, six months in, and it just, it was too much to handle, and, like, I shouldn't have been focusing on that shit. Like, at that point, like... I mean, the conversion rate was like 0.3%. It was crap, but it was still profitable. Yeah. So, you know, conversion rate optimization <clears> wasn't like... Why would you say it was 0.3? Mm-hmm. Is there like a... Is it, I mean, I guess with that type of brand, it just... I mean... That's just how it is. As in, I think I was focusing on refining when I really should have just been focusing on the meat and potatoes. Yeah. So, it's just being yeah, like... Yeah, just, yeah, 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 I should have been focusing on getting the logistics better at that point. That's, yeah, that's the it, problem. That's rather it, than it. fucking tweaking the colour of an anti cart button. Mm. It doesn't yeah. matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't like, it's yeah. so granular. And it, it might make a difference, you know, later down the line if you're a hundred million pound brand. But it was way too premature to be focusing on that shit. And just building up like massive overheads, which you don't need. That's it. It's so easy to just fall into that whenever mm. you've got, especially even just mm. any store working, there's like always an app. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or there's always like a, a new software <laughs> yeah, or a SaaS, something, man. That, oh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I fell into that. And then you've got like just bills coming out just that you just <laughs> forgot about, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I, I, I just think, I don't know where I'm going with this, but huh. j- just focus on the fundamentals. Yeah. Have a deep... Like, Principles. P- 
people will message me and be like, what theme should I use for my, my yeah, store? Like, it just doesn't matter. I really choose one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, that can matter like later down the line, but fundamentally, yeah. do people want the product? Mm. That's, 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 like, does yeah. it look decent? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, if you don't have a gut instinct for that shit, it's probably not for you anyway. Like, someone actually messaged me the other day, this is going on a tangent, and said, are you any good with Photoshop? I was like, I'm all right, why? He said, can you edit this picture of my website? <laughs> Well, like firstly no but yeah. secondly, get out <laughs> you could do that if you had any initiative you could do that on a billion different free apps That's it. like what 100% YouTube I don't know. yeah people don't I don't know I just how much is out I can't, I can't even imagine just writing that message though because I get messages <laughs> random you know what I mean random stuff yeah. all the time it's like I, I, don't, I couldn't time. even imagine just typing it out even when I was like a beginner you know what I mean stuff like yeah. that it's all mad yeah, yeah crazy shit um, <laughs> anyway back on track what I was sort of thinking as well which could be kind of insightful is just like when you start in Neon Beach did you know this it was is the fucking neon podcast? This is that, that is it's just so like so interesting to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, I don't know. Like, did you know it was going to be as big as it was? And like, how was it? Like, even just like starting it, you know what I mean? Like building it. Yeah, because uh, I remember I literally because I was running midnight at the time, and this is the thing. I already had a successful brand that yeah. I could I should have probably focused on in hindsight. Mm. Um, I started it because I bought a neon sign, an LED yeah. neon sign, with the Midnight City logo just for my bedroom. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, there's no one doing this online. Mm. This was like November 2019. And I was in LA in some co work space. It was a WeWork in Hollywood or some shit. And I made the website like entirely myself, mm. like all the logo and shit. Cause I've always been good at that stuff. Um, literally filmed an ad like the next week and mm. got a sale in the first day. I think in month one, it did like 100 grand. Yeah. And I was right. like, okay, fuck, run something here. Yeah. And I was, I've always just liked that aesthetic, like pink lights and shit. Mm. So mm. it was really almost like a passion project. Like I didn't, <clears throat> which is why it pisses me off when people are like, oh, fucking scam and shit. Like, I already had a good business. I didn't need to start this. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, like pretty much straight away, I thought, fuck, like this is going to be the one. Yeah. And then as well, like before shit went tits up, like I was getting approached by like investment funds that are like, we really like this. There was yeah. one in Miami, actually, that I spoke to you for like two months, would have mm. been like, September 2020, they were like, we've never seen growth like this. Like, we're interested in wow. maybe doing a deal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, fuck, like, this is going to be a hundred million pound business. And I still think there can be a neon brand yeah. that g gets to 300 million revenue. Definitely. I really do. Because the scale is so mad, like potentially. People just want the product it's and it's not easy really to get hard. it. Yeah. It's a really hard product to That's scale. It. Which is what I think a lot of brands have found. Like, there's a lot of brands that are around the same time that have disappeared as well. Yeah. There's like one or two that's still around, but I mean, I try not to follow them now because it's uh, like, uh, <laughs> it's not Pain, that good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, I guess it started honestly as like a bit of fun. Yeah. And then I was like, fuck, it's working. Yeah. Like it was, I've nothing I've ever started apart from this next one has been that intentional. It mm. always started as, oh, I'm quite interested in that. Mm. Let's give it a go. Yeah, it's a winning and prize. <laughs> like I'd rather start yeah. and figure it out than spend a year planning something, which I think is such a problem for so many definitely. people. Like, even with Space Goods, which we can come on to, like, the first product, I'll be honest, probably is 80% how I want it to be, but I'd rather get it out and get feedback ASAP rather and than work spending on it. six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, th this might be better. Like, it doesn't fucking matter until you yeah. get to customers. Mm. So nice. that's just the way I've always approached it, which is probably... Qu I'm quite a high, high risk, I suppose, which has maybe got me in hot water in the past, like, going too quick. <clears throat> but I just think if something's working... No, it's the best way. Just put your foot, put your foot on the gas and like yeah. you figure it out. Jump at the deep end, innit? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. How uh, did you like even get into space goods and like how did you think of this brand idea? Yeah, so I was having this conversation last night with this guy. Um, I guess I probably need to like refine the founder story, but <laughs> from a purely <laughs> raw perspective, I'd always been interested in like psychedelics and like just general nootropics and shit. Mm. Obviously, nootropics are legal. Psychedelics aren't in the UK. Um, so I've only ever done them outside. This is not <laughs> advice, by the way. This is not advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, like, I, I knew I wasn't going to stick around doing the neon stuff. So, like, the second that, you know, throughout, like, summer, I'd, I'd, I've always had, like, a Google Drive of yeah. ideas. Like, literally, mm. I could do this brand. I could do this brand. And I'd had the idea of doing something in the supplement space. And, and it mm. literally was a case of, so, like, it started with that general interest. Like, I guess it was something I cared about, like, mental well-being and shit. Because it's probably been, like, my biggest challenge my entire life, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And then I literally like reverse engineered. I was like, all right, this time I'm going to get it fucking right. So like, what were the problems last time? So things like I didn't have a high, a repeat purchase rate. So I need someone <coughs> that people can subscribe to. Mm. I want a small product, at least an 80% product margin, which mm. Neil never had, Midnight did. But 
you know, all these things like tick boxes. And I was like, well, you know, it, it could be one of a few things. It could be like oral care stuff, which I actually nearly launched, by the way. Like, like what? The whole like teeth whitening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I came back and I was like, fuck that. Yeah. Then I thought it could be like, mm. you know, some sort of, I thought Huel's a really interesting brand. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah interesting definitely. business. Like, I use that shit all the time. So I thought it could be trying to compete with Huel. And I thought, well, I'm not that passionate about it. I think mm. it's yeah. probably a bit crowded. And then I was like, well, new tropics and shit I've always been interested in. Like I used to take like dirty like pills and fucking barley, like <laughs> Ad- Adderall <laughs> and shit. Like legal yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've always been interested in like cognitive performance. And I was like, well, that's all great, but there's obviously a lot of competition in that space already yeah. anyway. Yeah. And then I was like, well, psychedelics are illegal, but I think there's going to be, it's, I, I think it's 10 years behind CBD. Mm. Right. In terms yeah. of like commercializing what w- what used to be taboo you know like i, I mm-hmm. don't like cbd personally i don't smoke weed any of that but a lot of people love it and like you've got that trips drinks trip drinks yeah, whatever yeah, that is yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's a great example of a brilliant brand that particularly in the uk has like dominated that space yeah but then obviously you know you can't sell psychedelics it's no illegal. yeah it's illegal yeah but then i was like well there's like natural mushroom ingredients like lion's mane and shit which i've taken before and like it helps me feel more calm and focused yeah. xyz like similar effect to cbd mm-hmm. in many ways just from a mushroom angle rather than right, right, CBD, right. weed, all that shit. And then I was like, okay, like all the brands in this space are very like vanilla is what I'd say. Like they're all yeah, very like yeah. blue, black, gray, like mm-hmm. aimed at middle-aged mm-hmm. women. They're all in capsule form and I can't swallow tablets. Oh, right. So this is a weird thing. So I tried a new Tropic product last year and it was all, my, my, my mate gave it to me. He was like sponsored by it and it was like all capsules. So I had to like pour, I literally can't swallow tablets. <laughs> you snapped in half, poured so in Literally, literally yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, this is just like a terrible experience. <laughs> so I was like, well, there's got to be space for a brand that firstly doesn't do it in like such a, a medical way. Medical and it's more way, like yeah. enjoyment. It's like, like fun. Gummies, yeah, powders, yeah, 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 shit yeah. you want to drink or eat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Similar to how Trip have done it in, from a CBD Colourful perspective. Colourful packets and cans. And, yeah. and then I was like, well, the mushroom space like isn't that crowded yet in terms of like Lion's Mane, Nootropics, all this sort of shit. But there's certainly not a brand that's pushing like the psychedelic angle, which, which mm. is a bit risky, I think. I mean, I'll find out. Yeah. And then I was like, well... You know, microdosing like psilocybin and shit is like massive over in like San Francisco and shit. Yeah, yeah. Still illegal, but there's a big like underground movement for all that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it can help you work better, more creative, X, Y, Z, like can basically cure depression. There's a load of fucking studies going on now. Sure. Yeah. It's like a Netflix documentary. I forgot what it's called. But yeah, I think I've it's some it. guy called, is it Patrick Carhart Harris or something? I should know his name. It's some big scientist mm. who's like d- research, like devoted his life to like psychedelics and shit. So watch that documentary if you haven't. Um, and there's definitely like an underground wave of I just feel that like actual psychedelics are going to become mm. it's just upcoming yeah more it's legalized the next, the next big over thing. time yeah but for now the way I'm positioning it is effectively like the products are illegal microdose imitation right right, right, right. which might sound ludicrous so but narrative. it's like introducing people to the cognitive effect of certain shit you take which is like obviously n- like the first product's called Rainbow Dust it's essentially you know stuff that's already out there to be quite honest with you mm. it's just probably a slightly more potent blend but the way i'm positioning it is this is like it's almost like an education brand as much as it is a product brand yeah right. that's where i want to go with it um but yeah i guess in a nutshell that's kind of how i came towards it It was like a few different things that like came from like an initial personal interest then i thought fuck me this could be like a billion pound industry or a billion pound brand potentially and then your, your personal experience with it as well and then aesthetically it's very much me so i, I think as a brand visually it's like my best work because like yeah. right. I've like done it all like I mean I've like used developers and shit but like creatively like I haven't outsourced anything like the whole visual aesthetic like mm. the colors yeah. the logo all that is all me um and I, I I guess it feels like a combination of everything I've done in the past has led yeah. me to like this next one uh, so, I, I love the name as well space good <laughs> do, yeah, do, do, so, do you know when yeah. you plan on launching March. March March okay that's soon so yeah, no pressure, but the, the fucking product better arrive in time. So <laughs> first, version one, yeah. product one is in development. But right. the way I see it going in terms of products, I'm probably giving away way too much here. But <laughs> I think there's three primary like desires okay. from a human perspective that this product can help with, or this type of product can help with. Probably four, but I think three main ones. The first one is like focus and like work mode, mm. which is the first one I'm focusing on. Mm. The second one is sleep. And like general, like right. being able to fall asleep, all that shit, super valuable. And the third one, actually, I thought it was going to be like mood, but I think that kind of falls on the other two. I think the third one is sex, mm. because I'm super interested in how, like, I know, you know, 
guys, myself included, I've taken out Viagra before and shit, like mm. Silas, whatever. Not all the time. Um, mainly when I was like, out in Bali in the past. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, I got it from a mate in Bali originally and like people it's watching, whatever. It's like to do, but everyone's fucking taking it. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just think that's quite an interesting category, but I think that's like longer term. Yeah. But in terms of like the first year, an actual product type, the first product's a powder. Yeah. So it's something you can mix with anything, basically, like mix it with coffee, mix okay, it with a okay. shake, with water, whatever, like low calories, et cetera, et cetera. Second product's going to be a gummy. I think gummies are great. Yeah. They're massive in America, particularly. The problem with gummies is you can't get much ingredients into them, I've learned right. in the past few months. Uh, right. And then like cans and bars, I think, because I, I think something like this could be massive in like Selfridges. Right. Like Waitrose even like mm. wholesale. This, this is what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, which I've never done before. Advertising wise, would would it be allowed? Like, like Facebook, let's say. Elements of it. the way I'm positioning it, I think might be a problem. But um, in terms of the actual product, yes, because there's a yeah. billion and one brands, you know, selling ultimately similar ingredients already. Yeah. yeah. But it's the first time I've gone into consumables of any kind. Right. So in terms of like, I won't say which supplier I'm working with, but like. Instead of going straight to China, which is ultimately where everything's made, including like <coughs> everything that says they're made in the UK, it's probably mm. sourced from China. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm using like a product consultant, basically, which is a bit of a middleman. And they're effectively like a lab that can, you know, tell me what I can and can't do. Right. Tick the right boxes and just bring my vision to life. Yeah. So it's yeah. literally a case of like, I got on a call with them a few months ago and was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing when it comes to like mm. ingredients. I'm not a scientist. I take you just a tell them what already. you want. And then how powerful happen. can we make this without yeah. being illegal? <laughs> right. How can we make it look like this? Yeah. Yeah, how can yeah. we get the packaging so QC perfect? QC pretty much on, on the yeah, exactly. top of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. they effectively become like your in-house nutritionist and like product development team. I guess, you know, they put a bit of a margin on it mm. and pay them a development fee, all that sort of shit. So that's the way I'm working working with it. Sick. Because I didn't want to be in a position where you know, I go to some supplier in China, yeah, and put yeah, X, Y, Z yeah. ingredients together. Well, it turns out yeah. poison someone. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's been one thing so many horror stories when it comes to like yeah. consumables. Yeah. You've got to be very careful. So, yeah, I was conscious of that, which is probably <laughs> me being slightly less risky for the first time in my life. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the plan really. And then yeah, I've gone down the fundraising route with this, mm. which I yeah. think I've mentioned briefly on my previous pods or whatever. But the reason for that is twofold. It's firstly. I could have funded it myself. It wasn't that primarily. Um, it's kind of two things. At first, I didn't want to be the only shareholder because I learned the hard way that can be very lonely when shit goes yeah, wrong. If yeah, you're the only yeah, one yeah. that, you know, everything falls with you if something goes wrong because you're the director and 100% of it, whatever, like it was for me last time. But secondly, like like I was saying before, like the whole strategic narrative, yeah. which is a term yeah, that yeah, this yeah. guy, Alex, who's on my pod, has got me on. In terms of like, how do I actually position this brand to make mm -hmm. sure I can make a hundred million quid in the next five years? Okay. Because that's what I want to do. Because like, it's it's one thing having, well, I guess it's a few things. Like this brand, I genuinely feel like can have a positive impact on people, which is gives it definitely like a, a mission. Because like, like I said, mental health has been a big struggle for me. I want to do something in that space. Mm. But I'm also very conscious of to have an impact, you need to have fucking money. Mm -hmm. And to have definitely, money, you need definitely. to have A, probably backing for, to an extent. But B, a product that actually sells. So yeah. you know, I don't, I don't want to be a science company that's developing something yeah, that may yeah, or may yeah. not work. That's why for now, it's a, it's a product that yeah. is legal mm -hmm. and you know leads towards that. So where, where was I going? Um, so that, that's the reason I'm doing that. Um, Sweet. And yeah, like just I've got a bunch of my mates who invested actually, um, and then two other guys who, one of them is yeah he runs a company now that's valued at like two billion quid so like mm. they, they know how to he's actually coming on my pod it's jack from wayflyer so they're Ooh, the guys that actually man. bailed me out yeah yeah um i think i can say that because it's in like the public mm. domain yeah. um so yeah he, he's the biggest single <clears throat> investor and the reason i wanted someone like him on board is probably can't add much from an econ perspective that much because it's not his bag yeah but what he knows is how to scale a company that's it. Mm. Like they've gone zero to 250 employees and I think $2 billion valuation in less than three years. It's just the experience, isn't it? That's, just that's, the thing. that's ridiculous. Yeah. And yeah, like I've come to the conclusion now as well. I'd rather have 30% of a 500 million pound business, which yeah. by the way, I haven't fucking done. That'd be insane. <laughs> but <clears throat> then 90% of a 10 million pound business. Yeah. Yeah. All um, the weights on your shoulders that way then. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I've, I think like just, I want to step away from the screen a little bit as well mm, to an yeah. extent. Like, Obviously, still in the early stages, very much in the trenches, but, you know, I want my day-to-day -to, -day to be filled with more, like, speaking to, like, advisors, investors, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. Like, even last night, I met with these guys who were interested in potentially investing. I, I don't think I need 
their money at the minute, but like they were throwing out loads of ideas, mm. for X, Y, Z thing that we could potentially do. And like, and these are guys that have been in the game like 40 years. Yeah. And, and I've definitely, I've got to the age now where I realize how much I don't know. Whereas when I, you're a bit younger, I think you're a bit yeah. arrogant mm-hmm. yeah. and you think I just do it all myself. Like I'm yeah, a baller, yeah. all this bullshit. I'll, I'll take it all You want to yeah. just get now the people who are the like best at what they the can game. do. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's how it is. So yeah, that's really the plan is, yeah, I mean, tr- try and have a massive impact product wise on what I'm doing. But yeah, I think it's an interesting thought experiment to, to say like, and everyone says a hundred million quid and it's just like an easy round number. But yeah. Like, how can you get there in two years? Yeah. Which is probably pushing it, but like... It's like a game. Just stretching the mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can't do that yourself on a laptop in I a mean, fucking bedroom. I've always said this, like, the power of delegation of roles is actually unrivaled. Because if you have someone who's amazing at editing and they're mm. editing it rather than you and you focus on something else, that bit's being done for you professionally at the greatest tier, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually so shit at that. Like, I'm even when I was... Obviously, like, it wasn't just me doing everything with Neon and Midnight, but I was so shit at delegating anything, mm. like, even customer service at the start, because I thought I could do it better. Really, really? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. I probably could yeah, do it yeah, better yeah. to an no, extent, yeah. but, because I'm pretty well-rounded in that respect, but it's just impossible. Yeah, like, you can't do it Especially yourself. in this game, time is money, man, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah so honestly, like, I'm so bad at that, like, it's just shit at hiring and, like, yeah. organising mm. teams. Because I, I think as well, it's a bit of... Like, I ended up getting a few employees in, in the end, like actual PAY employees mm-hmm. before shit went tits up. That was a bit of a mess. Um, but even then, it was like imposter syndrome because a lot, few of them were older than me. And right. like, oh, okay, I okay, just okay. found that quite difficult. But then you look at businesses like Gymshark and think, well, you know, Ben Francis was 23 when he brought in his yeah. CEO and the guy was like 50. Exactly. So what, he must have got What, what was there. it you just thought that you weren't qualified enough for it? I don't know what it was. Just a weird, like... This guy's older than me, and pe- they're working for me. That just feels ego like concept. Uneasy. It's ego concept, yeah, isn't I don't it? Know. Yeah, 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 even yeah. though like it was a great job for them, and I don't know, it's just yeah, weird. Something yeah. to get past. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I've always just been shit at it because, like, I, I can do like put me in, lock me in a room, and I'll make get any brand to a million quid in revenue. I'm certain of it. Yeah. Like, mm. In a certain amount of time, like anything. But if I want to get to that next level and do something. Like, take it from being a big bedroom brand to being a legitimate fucking corporation. Mm-hmm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm really trying to get my head around. And, yeah, I've got a guy called Jimmy coming on the podcast who sold a brand called Hairburst recently. And I was, he, he's been speaking to me quite a bit. He's kind of, like, mentoring me a little bit. Mm. Um, and he was telling me about that. Like, that's the biggest change yeah. in terms of going from, like, making a bit of money, like, from a laptop. Mm to positioning a business that you can actually make like it's eight months. A, a real it? business, that's it. Because even when, yeah. especially dropshipping, like, it doesn't... Yeah. It's so easy There's for no it to just Like real yeah. corporate fucking business. Like systems yeah. underneath you and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think that's where I've been having a challenge getting my head around, mm-hmm. but I'm intentionally positioning the next one. So right from the start, it, it looks like that. Because even now, like one of, one of the investors, Alex, who came on my pod, he's like the smallest cash investor, but now we're doing like twice a month He's like mentoring me because he's sold a business and made multi eight figures. Mm. He's been there. Like that's mm. happened. Do you know what I mean? He's been where I've been at the start. So just being humble enough to realise that I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Mm. <laughs> so I literally feel like I don't know anything. No. Nah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I know what I'm good at, but <clears throat> in terms of like, you know, getting to the big leagues, like actually making like, you know, fifty million quid personally or whatever. Which everyone says they want to do and, and that's great, but I don't, you're not going to do it sitting in a bedroom. Yeah, I, I always yeah, wonder, though, exactly. like, how complex is it? How complex does it get? How high level does it get? You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. And you yeah. can never know until you do it. What kind of, like, differentiates being a bedroom brand to being, like, an actual... Like, yeah, exactly. I'm fascinated by that. It's crazy. Because there's, there's obviously a clear step there because Gymshark went from, obviously, in in their homes yeah. doing that to, like, still being... Well, well, it's the biggest... Is it the biggest e-commerce... Brand in the UK. Uh, yeah, UK has got to be sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 500 million pound revenue now, isn't it? Something. Crazy. Yeah, so I've, yeah, that whole concept. And, and I think having spoken to a lot of people about it, like these investors and shit, it's just about, it's, yeah, re- removing yourself, giving it yeah. structure. And also like the whole strategic narrative, which I've said a billion times. <laughs> I think it's so true. Like, how do you position the business yeah. to be worth a huge amount of money to the right buyer? Got to structure it right. Just another it. one. How does it appeal to them? Yeah. XYZ products. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of wondering is like how are you actually going to structure your business differently now? Are you going to actually like do like drops kind of, or are you just going to continuously sell it? 
Yeah, so I think one thing I learned the hard way with Midnight City particularly is I didn't have enough newness and newness sells. So what I mean by that is I would make sure I have something new every month going right, forward. Okay. Whether that's a new flavor, a new skew, a new product. Okay. Monthly subscription every, every yeah, month something, to get a new flavor. Like, yeah. Brands that do really well, like I mentioned Sanucci, like Fred's nailed that because he has something new all the time. Yeah. And yeah, trying to get him on the pod, but it was kind of... <laughs> But I never, I think with Neon, it's a bit different because it's like customized products and shit. But with Midnight, I didn't launch a product for like nine months and it was doing super, super well Yeah. in like 2019 and then 2020 because of like the COVID boom, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, how the fuck is it selling so well? We have like three best sellers and they've been the same for a year. You want to keep the customers excited. Exactly. Yeah. Just keep the brand fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be the genuine approach, yeah. But but it's, it's also a subscription brand. So, yeah. you know, it would be... I mean, I'll probably play around with a few things, but every product, the intent is that people subscribe because they feel mm. the benefit and they yeah. want to subscribe. Yeah. And that's also how you get, you know, raise the value of a business. Also, so many routes you can take with that as well. But, well, For MRR example. is the new thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Almost view it like a fucking technology company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than just really. an e-com brand selling a product. A product, yeah. So one one thing that I really want to like sort of touch on, sort of know a little bit more about obviously yourself. After our two hour break. Yeah, after our two hour break, which I'm just not going to address. <laughs> yeah, we will not talk about that. Um, right, yeah. So pretty much, what is your like routine like as like a high level entrepreneur? Let's say definitely not high level entrepreneur. But, um, <laughs> routine. Yeah, I work from home, so yeah. I've kind of always done that. Um, which we were saying before, I think there's pros and cons to it. Um, live with a flatmate who runs a similar business. I've always done mm. that for like the past three years since I've been in London. I guess I try and give it more structure now than maybe I used to. Yeah. Almost give myself like a nine to five. Because like, I think the irony is everyone like gets into like, entrepreneurship or whatever because they don't want to go down a nine to five. Mm. Yeah. But then as I've got older, I've realized probably need a bit of structure. Like I try not to work on like weekends as much and shit. Mm. Because yep. otherwise it's just all consuming. I suppose for me, like generally I get my best work done in the morning. Like I'll do like eight or two. Right. Like kind of deep work. I don't, don't eat. Like really? eat, eat after well, I, I eat at like two p.m. Have my lunch then. Then I go like so, you look, so. So you're looking forward to it? You're like, yeah, I'm gonna work for this food. Yeah, legit. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. I just like always like intermittent and fasted, but didn't even I don't even think of it as a thing. Mm. Like, I just don't eat breakfast genuinely, but that's never even been like a biohacking I, thing. I, I, I don't, like, I don't, I don't like breakfast. Yeah, it's, I like yeah. having coffee and shit, M- mushroom coffee as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, genuinely go gym in like the afternoon. Um, probably like three, four p.m. Walk my dog. Which Jeez, I now have. My dog. Yeah, yeah. my little, little miniature sausage dog is on yeah. the pod all the time. I saw him, he's cute, man. He's cute. And then, yeah, then I guess what I do after that, I go like sauna and shit, try and meditate. Yeah. Which I'm trying to do more of now. This is it. And I'll see, yeah, a lot of people are talking about this now. So, med- meditation, meditation, right? You, you've been, I know you post it on like your Twitter and shit. What, what is it? It's like them floating Sensory pods. Sensory deprivation that's tank, it, I think that's I called it. officially. Yeah, I, I literally, I've done that twice in my life. I've only started doing that yeah. like, literally two weeks ago. But yeah, I just. My mind is super active. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are. I yeah. don't know if that's mm-hmm. yeah. as a result. It's probably partly because generally smarter people build businesses, arguably, like in, in a certain way of thinking, mm. like active minds. But also, you've got a lot going on. Like you don't, you don't leave it in the office. It's like a million so ideas always going around your head. Yeah, like I've always just been a massive overthinker. Yeah, which, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I was saying before, like I, I try and say, "Well, that must mean I'm smart or whatever," just to like justify it. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think. I've never really, I think like feeling at peace and shit has mm. b- become more of a priority as I've got mm. older again. I don't know, maybe it's because of how much stress I went through last year and I just felt like shit for ages. Mm. And yeah, I'm, I'm by no means good at meditation, but I'm definitely trying to get my mind as the priority going forward because n- nothing else yeah. matters really if you don't yeah. get that in the right headspace. That's it, man. If you're, if you're trapped in your own mind, then you can't yeah. do anything, bro. Not free. Yeah, yeah right. I find it hard to work when there's just a lot on my mind. You know what I mean? Oh, honestly, like, even, I think I put on Twitter the other day, like, I started using Twitter just as, like, yeah, a yeah. fucking, I never used to share that much, but it's, it's like, interesting to look back on in a few years, I suppose. And mm. the first three weeks of Jan, I felt so motivated and everything, felt really clear and yeah. good. Then we had a massive weekend, this weekend gone, I was doing dry January while I was trying. <laughs> And then I think that just fucked me up. Not so dry, January. I texted or, my ex girlfriend yeah. and shit. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> damn bad. No, honestly, yeah. Oh, and man. then, like, I blocked her on Instagram. I like, unblocked her and, like, yeah, bad, yeah, bad, bad, never. bad. Got in my head so bad. And that's not a good combination. Like, was that because of the alcohol? Right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. like, honestly, like, part of me thinks I should do, like, a year no drink. But, I mean, really? like, 
there's obviously levels to it. If I have a bottle of wine, it's fine. But if yeah. I go out to 5 a.m., two days in moderation. a row, yeah, 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 in, in fit, moderation, exactly, I don't do that yeah. shit anymore. And honestly, yeah, I've had anxiety like all week. It's only like feeling a bit better today. So you're retiring from nights out. Is that, is that, yeah. I really feel like I should. Like, yeah. honestly, that whole that whole like balling in a club shit, like whatever, like it's cool when you're younger. <laughs> I'm yeah. just kind of he's, over no, it. The thing is, he's still got to force me to come out on nights out. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, oh yeah. Honestly, oh, do you know like what one is? time. Like, <laughs> no, 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 you, you still got, yo, come, come, yeah, come. Yeah, yeah. I think oh, I've realized man. like, I've never been, like, even when I was in uni, I was never like that into like big nights out and shit. I'm, mm. I much prefer like going to a bar yeah. with like mates or whatever. Civilized sort of like, like, like jazzy sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, Honestly, yeah, yeah. like it sounds silly, but like, I think this whole like gray goose, bottle show stuff is actually and sparklers and everything yeah, like yeah, yeah. it is cool if you're celebrating something which but most people aren't really celebrating something i think they're just trying to they escape, got every like, weekend yeah yeah and fail. it's fucking expensive in london yeah man. celebrating like, the Jesus uselessness Christ. i've never yeah. i've never been sucked into that have you thankfully. seen people like be sucked down into like obviously go into money and then kind of go down that cycle well i mean I, I probably did that to an extent when i was a bit younger like just going out partying and stuff but i've never i'm much happier like I said, I, having like a glass of wine, like a conversation rather yeah. than mm. just can't hear anyone. I, I've, it's never been my scene. I think probably a lot of people pretend it's their scene to yeah. look cool or whatever. Yeah. Look cool. yeah. I just fit in. Yeah. And, and even shit like, kind of getting deep here, but even shit like on, on like Twitter, like I tweeted about my ex girlfriend, this fucking comes up in every post. <laughs> I'm not, it's on my mind right now. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck, like I'm like, di- like emotional about it or whatever. And mm. like you get so many guys mm. that are like, oh, just. Get, just like, go over so it. like get more yeah. hose or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, mate, yeah. Come on, come on. Grow like, up. I don't know. I don't think that's what. I think that's just a front. I really so, do. So would you say like the whole like girlfriend thing is that like? Does it keep you grounded? Maybe the fact that when you did have a girlfriend, it kept you grounded. Yeah. So that? I've debated this since in the in the past few months since since I broke up with her, yeah. um, which I'm definitely not over. Um, <laughs> if she's watching, <laughs> um, shout him. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, I definitely, I was a bit of a dick looking back in certain right. certain cases. I was in a bad headspace. I, I didn't do mm. anything particularly wrong. Um, I just probably said things I shouldn't have said and so on. But um, yeah, definitely regret that because she definitely had my back and shit. It's kind of deep, start crying. No, it's um, all right, it's all right. But what was I saying? Yeah, I've come to the conclusion. I think it is more productive if you've got a girl that's that you're on the same page with. Yeah. I think Iman said it in my book. I was literally about true. to say yeah, like a toxic it, relationship yeah. is the worst. There's like different levels. Being like actively single is slightly better as in like chasing girls and shit, yeah. which probably everyone does if, to a certain extent when they're younger. Being like an average relationship is good. Then it was like monk mode single is even better. Mm. But I don't really, I, like, I get like lonely if it's like monk mode spec. So yeah. I need to like see people or like, right. and then like the best thing is having a great relationship. So yeah, I think, I think I've, I prefer probably having a good relationship than being single as an entrepreneur. I think it's ultimately more productive because you? you're not going out partying and yeah, stuff, yeah. whatever, mm-hmm. like chasing girls, even though I'm not really doing that right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is this is what I'm doing. Do we ever have like phases of like monk mode or or like... I've never done that. Yeah. I, I probably should. I'd like to try it. I've probably just lived in more moderation generally. Mm. Um I think like not. Dr- I've got. I've done like two or three months not drinking in periods, which definitely helps me keep my own mind in check. Because I, like, I just notice like if I drink loads, it just gets me in a bad headspace. Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. it does with everyone. Like yeah, you do stupid course, shit, like course. text your ex, which then yeah. fucking brings out a bunch of other yeah. problems. Because ah, oh, what did I say? What didn't yeah. I say? Um. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's about finding the balance. I, as it. I've got a bit older, I'm starting to think like I don't. I'm definitely not like a fucking player or lad anymore like i don't want to be that i don't think most mm. people are they like just i was do it when i was like they're just influenced into it man that's it man this, they this want whole toxic being toxic I don't, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I really I don't, don't buy into it. this toxic masculinity like yeah playing like literally like guys will say like hoes and shit like mm. yeah i think that's not me at all like, i'm like a fucking romantic cunt like if i like mm. a girl then it's like love do you know what i mean yeah. and that's very rare um for me because not many girls have like, had that feeling for Mm. Right. Um, obviously did with my ex-girlfriend still do um, yeah, I don't know I, I don't know where it's going yeah, it, yeah, I've no. been deep in my feels about it it's just fair. a situation isn't it you know what I mean it's oh. yeah I think I think sh- she it's a fucking relationship podcast now. I, no, I think right, right. 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 Like right. I think stress that I was under made me say and do things that weren't a true reflection of my character mm. in hindsight and, and I'm not proud of some things I said to her and so on 
Yeah. I guess and everyone makes feels, mistakes at some point. Yeah, yeah I definitely made a mistake in that respect. Yeah. I probably didn't appreciate her looking out for me in the way she did. Because I think it's quite rare. I think most girls wouldn't do that. I guess even or a lot of girls wouldn't do that. As an entrepreneur, like there's always so many things going on. Mm. You know what I mean? There's always a new a new project or yeah, something yeah. you've got to focus on. You can just easily distract yourself with it, but yes. it's, it's so easy to just also just forget what's in front of you. I don't know. Like I've I've also just had things just in general, just anything. Like I'm not talking about relationship wise because I don't really. I, 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 I don't so know. I don't shit. do it. I'm not, I'm not really like that. But um, but obviously I'm just talking about in general, like business, families. It's, it's always so hard to just. I don't it's know, there's so many find, things going on. Yeah, you have to find a middle ground. So hard to find a balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, this is something I've debated with my mates a lot, and they're all entrepreneurs, like, similar age, some are older, some are younger, mm-hmm. but some people have this idea that, like, you have to make it before you can have a relationship, which no, I don't subscribe no, to, by the way. No, no, no. And then, you know, as in, like, they say, like, you can't go near girls, like, you have to focus, 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 yeah. girls are a distraction, blah, blah, blah. But then, at the same time, like I said, if you're single you have needs like you're going to want to speak to girls and shit mm. so that's why i think i've come to the conclusion for me i'd rather be in a healthy relationship if it's right than you know just being single for the sake of oh i've got to focus on more my focus shit. i feel, I feel like it's you're gonna be less yeah, focused yeah, anyway exactly. in a way. Yeah. i mean i don't know maybe it's rose tinted looking back but there's there's definitely i like having someone to fucking cuddle yeah. at the end of a yeah, stressful yeah, day yeah yeah, yeah 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 and that's what i've definitely missed in recent months and then it's like ah oh, fuck I, I mean, I think it seems like you just worked out what it is that you want. Like, obviously, there's different people at different stages in their life will want different yeah, things. That's yeah. what you learn. Um, I don't know. It feels like there's, there's unfinished business there for me, to be honest, with my ex girlfriend, if she's watching, which she probably isn't, but if she is. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. Make it into a clip or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so, do you nah. think you learned a lot about yourself? Yeah. Throughout that, that period of time? Yeah. Which, do you know what, as well? Like, it's like anything in life. I feel yeah. like there's four pillars to like a truly successful life. It's like health, wealth, love, and happiness, right? Yeah. Mm. It's not just money. It's no and way. a lot of people, like I think it's human nature, particularly like guy nature. When you're younger, you like want to chase the bag. Chase the this. bag. Yeah, literally about to say that. Yeah. And then you probably sacrifice like your mental health. I've certainly done that, mm. but without that, you've got nothing anyway. And then it's like, like health, wealth, love, and happiness. I suppose like like happiness ultimately is actually the goal. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, start get like. Regardless I don't know. I think else. you have to make a bit of money and do some stupid shit and realize what doesn't make you happy. To kind of realize that, but I think to be properly happy, you have to have, for me at least, being more self aware now. I, I want to mm. be able to chase a mission, but also have a, like a relationship with mates. Probably a better relationship with my parents, which I've probably not invested enough in over the years. Um, and ultimately, yeah, like I, I look at someone like Scooter Braun as like mm. successful. Mm. I don't look at someone like Drake as as like successful in my view, as 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 successful as him because he's got like no family life and shit. Mm. Right. I don't know, like my uncle I probably shouldn't say this, but he's a super successful entrepreneur. But I've always looked at him and thought, but you have no family life. He's like divorced twice, mm. doesn't see his daughter. I guess you could say he's successful in one aspect. And I just but don't see that it's, as it's, like it's, fully successful. It's a whole circuit. There's, there's a rounded. range of things. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's like yeah. I guess like my you know fifteen twenty year vision is like want to built something great, made all the money X Y Z. But then, what does it matter if you don't have a good circle of not just romantically and like family, but also like a good circle of like guy friends, girlfriends, whatever it is. Like yeah. I don't know. I, I think yeah. Maybe in the past year, I've started to realize more what actually like adds up to be truly like yeah. the full picture and it's different for everyone yeah. but i think too many people kind of just bullshit themselves thinking oh success is getting the bag fucking dropping money in a club and that is all no. cool yeah mm-hmm. but for me like i'm just happier fucking like honestly like walking my dog and having a conversation it's with simple people things. that it's i simple like things, yeah do you think your goals have changed since you were like 15 16 looking into e-com and stuff like that and then to where you yeah i mean now? when it started it was like you know the goal was buying audi r8 like i think everyone starts with material goals because they're mm. more precise mm. and it's more easy to say like you know i buy that car and then i've done it or whatever but then you realize that's not it and then for me that like whatever cars were like the material thing i chase and shit and i, th- I think that's good but yeah, Christ, getting pretty philosophical. But I think you realise... I've realised as I've got a bit older, which I keep fucking saying because I feel like I'm getting old now. <laughs> but it's a more holistic picture. Like, I don't think you, I don't think the person that's made 100 million quid but fucking has to do drugs every Tuesday to feel nah. healthy is successful. Oh, well, yeah. They're no, successful well, yeah. in one way. 
at the expense and, of their health. No, nah, it's just yeah. Fraud. And I probably used to think, you know, anyone that doesn't chase money, like I, I don't know, I don't think I was ever chasing money. Anyway, I was chasing freedom and excitement. Yeah, and then money was a vehicle for that. Yeah. That, that's where I think like my parents have got me wrong in the past saying like you chase money all this shit. And my, my dad still says that and it's just not true. Mm. Like, if I was chasing money, why would I like I should I go get a job in like banking? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. fucking sell pink lights on the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's much yeah. more flamboyant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, flamboyant I mean, yeah. you creative. genuinely enjoy making obviously like space goods or like a brand like that. If you genuinely enjoy it, then yeah, you may be getting money, but you're you're chasing your passion. Yeah, so yeah. that's it. Yeah, and I, I think you just realise like you have to make money to be able to chase your passion and like. Yeah, like there's so many avenues to go down with that, but yeah, I suppose I've realised now probably what makes me happy and I and I view as success is is more the four pillars: health, wealth, love, and happiness. Yeah, and obviously like work and business is takes up most of your chunk in life, time wise. Yeah, but I think there's always time for the, the other stuff as well. Like, oh, yeah. there's an interesting <clears throat> anal- analogy. I don't know if it's like a YouTube video or whatever. There's like a guy that puts like stones into a jar and he's like this looks full I see and he adds sand and he said <laughs> yeah, oh it looks yeah. full now then he adds water and it's and it's in the still room yeah and like the message there is like it's such bullshit when people say like they don't have time for we'll make time like i don't know family or friends yeah. or relationships yeah. it's ultimately just priorities and being self-aware and yeah i suppose like, i feel like my age now for everyone not just entrepreneurs is kind of like that weird stage where like you're like a proper adult now like you're not like a 18 year old where i feel yeah. like a lot younger but you're not i haven't got like wife and kids yet yeah. and like, probably like at least five years five ten years before that mm. i mean depending on whatever and like relationships like the relationship i was in with my ex-girlfriend like that was like well i thought we'd probably get married one day yeah do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll get back together. And get nah. <laughs> but yeah, like the, the dynamic with everything changes because if I'm like getting into business with someone or into a relationship with someone now, yeah. it's like it's pro- I'm probably hoping it's going to be longer term because otherwise, why would I bother at yeah, this point? There's no there's exactly. no point in thinking about like the short term at this at this point. You know what I mean? Like just even in general, like na- even with me, like I'm like yeah. yeah, like I'm sure I've got a lot of time, but like. Why energy. do I need to focus on the short term? No. You know what I mean? Like, let me just think about the long term. Like, yeah, like it's cool to get a bit of money. Like, you know, just just run up wherever, like, quick things. But at this point doing, now, it's just in general with everyone, it's a lot of like existentialism. You, yeah, it? and like it's so evolved. E- yeah. Like realistically, like, there's no value in money. Like, it's literally is non fungible. Like, it's, you can't touch money. Even though you have, like, if you had a yeah. twenty pound note, like, yeah, that's just a medium of exchange. Right. And realistically, if you're working a nine to five, sometimes you can be happy. But if you're not, then your medium of exchange is your mental health. Yeah. Uh, realistically, you're you're suffering to make other people rich who it's are true. probably not happy anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole vicious cycle. So yeah, yeah, cycle. Yeah. Yeah, and I also think like another toxic trait, and like, and I, and I think I've been misinterpreted on my own pod and stuff, and like my own family members, like. I'll, I'll like jokingly say like civilians or whatever. Like <laughs> not everyone, like I'm not shitting on nine to fives at all. I, mm. All I have a problem with um, is people that want to do something and don't pursue it. I yeah. think that's, mm. that's the problem. 100%. I think 99.9% of people are probably happier not building their own business. I mean, it's and just, I almost wish themselves. I was one. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not, like, I've never, when I've said like, you know, entrepreneurs versus, it's an entrepreneurial podcast. So like that's the audience. But mm. like, my my twin, I have a twin brother, non-identical twin brother, complete opposite to me. We don't look alike. He has a nine to five, so to speak. Good job and shit, but it's very different to me. Like, mm. and there's elements of that that I'm envious of. Mm. Like, he's definitely probably happier than me yeah, in many ways. Say, it certainly yeah. has been. Um, it's a lot more stable. You know, he, he can kind of switch off a lot more than I can. Yeah. He's yeah, like just less high risk, I suppose. Um, so yeah. I don't want for a minute people to think when I talk about like distinction between entrepreneurs and civilians, which is a completely sarcastic tongue in cheek term, but like just people that aren't entrepreneurs, it's, people should just be self aware. Yeah. And I think most people would be happier doing something that isn't entrepreneurialism because it's fucking difficult. But I only, yeah. pursue, I, I only pursue this shit because I couldn't do anything else. Like I would quite happily, you know, I think there's a billion great careers that people can pursue. The only yeah. problem, the, the thing I, have empathy f- well the thing that frustrates me when i like my own mates for example from home which aren't all entrepreneurs at all is when they don't like what they're doing but they're not willing to Step even back themselves it's, yeah exactly i think that's the saddest thing when someone can't even 
like even if it's like to go and get this dream job after uni like they just actually sell it's complaining with no intent to actually change yeah or, or to, to, yeah. To, to, to yeah exactly that's literally what it is and i feel like even just the whole like nine to five topic whatever i always so careful because i know that it's so easy to be like especially with all entrepreneurs it's so easy to be like ignorant about that type of thing you know what i mean mm. because we just can't imagine anything different you know what i mean like it's at least with me like i've obviously i've never had a job yeah. you know what i mean never worked a well shoot. and also as well people saying that for, they forget if you want to build a big business your entire team is going to be nine to five yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah, you're exactly. Them. yeah, yeah and yeah. your customers but as you well. need them and yeah. your customers exactly so yeah like i don't want anyone to think the message i'm putting out is yeah that's like some bullshit i literally think entrepreneurship is like an illness and if you have to scratch <laughs> it i can do it but i think the sad thing is it's just simply everyone should everyone knows what excites them deep down like even if it's like something small, like I don't know, you secretly want to start like a fucking hair and makeup YouTube channel. Yeah, but your yeah. friends are telling you, oh, it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. fucking start just it, man. Do it, man. Also, re- have a rethink about your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, they just yeah so just little dreams. things like that. Because yeah, like I don't know. Everyone has probably something that they know they would like to do, or and and, and some people don't as much. Some mm. people genuinely probably are happy. Well, or they're like happy in their job, and there's no major ambitions and whatever. That's fine. Like their ambition might be just to fucking have a chill life, and and that's mm. I'm kind of envious of that as well <laughs> yeah. to an extent. Yeah. But yeah, I think the point is just the saddest thing is when people don't even try something that they want to do. Mm. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Well, obviously, back in the day, you said that you did like you know YouTube, you did a bit of vlogging stuff. You also yeah. said you did a bit of music. Yeah. Is, is any thing you would still thinking of doing well i used to want to be in like a fucking band that was like my thing when i was yeah. like six. well i actually did there was like a few obsessions when i was younger i did rowing for like eight years that yeah. was my life so i wanted to be an olympic athlete right wow and i was pretty good like i was like as a junior national champion twice and all this shit if anyone rowing they'll probably laugh but um it's a very niche sport right right right. i've got a mate who's in the olympic team now which and is that the one who you're on the podcast no but he that's another guy yeah from the, the same setup but it's just not for me because i realized i kind of fell out of love with the sport mm. And I probably wasn't quite good enough for the Olympics anyway. But that was like my first obsession. That that taught me like work ethic, honestly, yeah. more yeah. than anything. Because I'd be in a boat at 6 a.m. Really 12 years yeah. old on literally an icy river in, in York up north. That's nuts. And that was the first time ever where like I realised if you put effort into something, you can actually go and be good at it or be great at there's, it. There's progress, yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. So that's probably where I learned a lot of just fucking hard work to be honest and then yeah the whole music thing i kind of went through a phase like an emo phase when i was like 16 i was always into music like mm. i played guitar sang mm. a bit i used to go busking and shit oh uh, nice um i'm definitely not like that good at singing i'm actually better at freestyle rapping honestly i'm pretty hey. good crazy maybe we can do it at the end the yeah, yeah, the oh yeah jump in the stew yeah let's do it oh, um, but then yeah i had my i had, had like a youtube channel yeah. when i was like 17 doing like justin bieber covers and yeah, shit yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. so cringe but i used to get like five thousand views and then people said i look like Niall horan and all this <laughs> but I, I, I was self-aware enough to know i wasn't quite good enough for like the singing thing but yeah then i had like the, vo- the vlog channel right so i guess i always had a bit of me wanted to like put content out but uh, to be honest like yeah i mean they were never probably the right things whereas the podcast now feels like oh this is like the right thing right yeah thing. but yeah, even for me, like I stopped doing like the music shit because someone from school said it was gay or whatever. I remember that. Yeah, no. Nah. And then that, that's kind of deep, but yeah. So, but that, I mean, because even like with all of us, we've been to school very recently. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I I still have so like vivid memories of just everything, man. And like, I even remember like people telling me like I had one person when I was speaking about business a little bit. I never spoke. I no one knew what I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't tell people anything, and I was still like, obviously doing Josh whatever. Then, even when I was in like when I was getting it to work, no one knew my school but this was before when i didn't get it to work you know what I, mean? I was trying whatever and i was like yeah i'm gonna make this business xyz let me do this and someone literally told me they said you're not an entrepreneur you are not you can't be and i'm yeah. like just watch Say no. you know what i mean and then obviously yeah, yeah it's, uh, that's it but i feel like i remember from school just in general it was so toxic just yeah. anything mm. if you had a dream and you've actually everyone was no one said about their dream yeah no one would even say anything like which is away from the norm because it was so, so weird true. but i was always one of the people who i just didn't really care i yeah, would just no, i, I was, wouldn't tell people anyway because it doesn't affect me if they know or not but like if i was gonna do it i was gonna yeah. do it you know what i mean yeah i think like the one message i've said a billion times is like it's like with trolls on on the internet as well yeah. like nothing better to do man people that hate on anyone in like any respect particularly online i just aren't doing anything with their own lives yeah, yeah and facts. you really should feel sorry for them <laughs> that's it because 
like, I can't think of a time I've ever written a negative comment on the internet, no. ever. Even if there was something to write about. Exactly. You, why would I put yeah, it out there? Exactly. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just wasting your own time as well. Like, it yeah, it's really just make... about don't be a complete cunt to people for yeah, a start. 100%. But yeah, like if, you know, it's so true, like haters aren't doing anything more than the people yeah. they're hating on. Ever. I don't know anyone who's winning that's It's usually just reports. like projecting their own insecurities. Yeah. Yeah. Insecurities, yeah. yeah. It. yeah it gets it deep, yeah, literally. And yeah. they're helping our like engagement. Stuff going Thank on at you. home or something. I don't, I, God knows, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think anyone that's writing hate comments should seek help because it's probably their own problems. And they're, and they're helping our engagement as well. <laughs> yeah, facts. Um, yeah. With the new on beach hate, did you do any therapy thing or anything like that? Is there anything that maybe you did this to handle it? Because that was uh, really tough. I, I, pro- I definitely need a therapist now, I think. I've had <laughs> like, therapy on and off over the years. Yeah. Um, I actually ended up speaking to some of the... There was a guy that made a Facebook group. He was like in his mid-50s. I mean obviously a shambolic excuse of a man, but, and he made a Facebook group that yeah. like started all this hate and I ended up speaking to him on, he wouldn't go on a phone call with me. I was like, mate, let's just speak. I was trying to be like empathetic yeah, to yeah, yeah. how strange this man was acting. But yeah, I was like email back and forth with him and wow. I was just like, I think he was shocked how honest I was and then the Facebook group ended up getting deleted because everything got resolved anyway. Yeah. But that wasn't really what you asked. But yeah, I suppose like, <laughs> Dealing with shit like that head on sometimes yeah. is a better way to go. Or, or you just ignore it, but at the time it was pretty heavy, so I kind of couldn't. But yeah, I think like therapy in general, I mean, this is therapy. Therapy yeah. is just yeah. speaking I was, I was to people. Earlier, yeah. So, yeah. I think particularly guys have an issue with like sharing their feelings and shit. They put on a front, man. They put on a front. Whereas I'm like a fucking deeply emotional person. Like, yeah. that's just who I am. I, Not scared to admit that, no. Whereas I think it's such a strange. Again, it's like the whole like social media thing. Everyone wants to pretend that like they've never felt sad yeah, and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. fuck, like my my entire personality is like ups and downs. Like, yeah, it's just. I mean, it's probably like even to a pretty extreme extent. But yeah, I think just speaking about shit. That's it. Like, I mean, like even me bringing up my ex girlfriend, like every yeah. podcast yeah. right now is just therapy for me because I feel like I need to say it. Because if you've got all them mind. thoughts in your head all the time, yeah, like, they're trapped. It's, and, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. That was why I started the podcast as well. I think, like, all you can ever be in life is honest and authentic. I think that's that's what everyone should strive mm. to be, even if that honesty upsets people. Yeah, and or or, or admits that you're wrong. Do you know what I mean? I, I hate to keep on talking about Neil Beach. Obviously, I don't want to like or anything like that. But um, obviously, the one thing which really stood out to me as well is I wanted to sort of know, like, at what point did you know? Okay, I'm gonna have to just like get in the process of dissolve, not dissolve, but like I'm gonna. Have have to like yeah i can't continue this business anymore it's it's yeah yeah that's actually an interesting question because i spoke about this with my mate i probably i was probably in a bit of denial how bad it was for a few months and then i finally like got proper advice from my accountant and shit which by the way they were fucking awful they were a reputable firm (laughs) they just didn't they did not help me enough at the time yeah yeah anyway um and yeah i think that was the biggest thing i think and that's one thing i mentioned in the first pod like one of the biggest lessons is i think when something's actually going wrong whether it's in business or your mental health or anything or even just like you're fucking sad about a girl just mm. admit that you've got do you want to speak about something yeah or yeah. you've got a problem accountability yeah. yeah like and i think people are afraid to like i was probably afraid a little bit because i thought like fuck like all my mates think i'm a successful guy because I had been, and I still consider myself a successful person because I'm always pursuing. Mm. But like, e- even to like, like my own parents, like my girlfriend at the time, like it was like, fuck, are they, are they gonna think I'm some like fraud? Mm. Like, are, is she like, you know, is she gonna fucking leave me? Because I don't know, maybe we're not going to fucking Novikov. Not that we ever did. That's just a meme. But um, <laughs> yeah, what like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, and by the yeah. way, that was never the case. She was never in it for that at all. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, that was, like, an ego thing you deal with. Yeah. And I think because so few people speak about just general day-to-day ups and downs, mm-hmm. let alone, like, mm-hmm. catastrophic failures like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, yeah, like, that's why I wanted to share the, the that's large what I mean. like, part I think, of that story. Like, I really respect you for what you've done. Obviously, actually talking about it, you made a whole podcast. Yeah, and if yeah. you haven't watched it as well, I would definitely the recommend it. link is in the description. It's definitely yeah, I mean, to be the fair, best like, I've ever watched, to be honest with you. It's yeah, just so I, raw. I probably, there's a lot I probably didn't even say in that, but, yeah, like... Yeah, it, I think just admitting when something's gone wrong is very hard. Cause, was, was it a mm, weight off your shoulders? Yeah, it was a weight off my shoulder when I started like realizing that like this happens to businesses all the time. Mm, the start, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 
going into fucking debt and like getting bailed out and shit. Yeah. It's just shit doesn't it happens to the biggest of businesses you see like all the time. Like these businesses, like where every Premier League club is insolvent. Do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly. like literally, yeah, but they all just have Arab money back in them, so it's fine. <laughs> it's or nuts. something like that. But yeah, I think facing up to like the realities of shit going very wrong at a large scale, mm. like a lot of money involved, definitely like matured me and made me thicker skinned. Because now I just think like, how the fuck can I lose? I honestly yeah, exactly. do. It's almost like yeah. fearlessness. Hundred percent. But yeah, you have to like face face the fucking beast yeah, yeah, yeah. to That's do sick. that. Like sick. I could have very easily, you know, just shut my laptop, so to speak, when yeah. when shit was hitting the fan. But like it was every day, like just fifteen hours a day sorting mm-hmm. stuff out, and that was a horrible, horrible, horrible. Thing. What was like the sorting stuff out? Is it is it just dealing with like a whole or? whole fucking load of shit? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's probably a lot of it's a lot of a blur looking back yeah, now. Just yeah, like yeah. dealing with customers, firstly deciding what to do, like ultimately then you know speaking with funds and private equity groups that you know can, can help with this mm. sort of situation and getting advice in that respect how long did it take to like find closure after that business what like legally or mentally no 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 like yourself mentally, mentally you yeah. know what i mean oh probably only in the past like few months to be honest crazy yeah like that. that's why i wanted to move on to the next thing yeah and use that as a and probably start the podcast that probably that's what put i was a lot say. of closure that's, on that's definitely a good good way massive learning curve yeah definitely huge learning curve and i was like fuck it well let's try and use it as a positive because mm. my personality i'd call myself like a, a cynical optimist i think i put this on twitter the other day i don't know where i've come up with that but like i'll like take the piss out of my own fucking fuck ups now because like mm. no one's got any dirt on me when i yeah, put it yeah. all online exactly. already yeah. like yeah i used to have a ferrari now i don't but i'll get another one next year like yeah. okay well, what can they say now do you know what i mean what was it like having a ferrari shit really because I mean, I used to have an Audi R8, which I much preferred. A green one. Should have kept that car. Great car. Four-wheel drive. Oh. Much, e- much easier to drive in London. Oh. That Ferrari is just, like, honestly a bit embarrassing, to be honest. I don't know. Something about it just doesn't attract the right kind of Much attention. tougher to drive as well. Yeah. Yeah, much tougher to drive. It's like, yeah, it's pay attention. Yeah. Like, rear-wheel drive, big fl- flappy paddle gearbox, all this shit. Oh, like, nah. 2014 as well, so it wasn't actually that modern. But, yeah. Do you think it was, like, an ego-driven kind of purchase or it actually wasn't to be fair because i've always been super passionate about cars oh, like fair. ever since i was like 50 12, 12 even to be yeah, honest yeah, like, yeah. i was always a petrol head it was never what's your dream car i'm really kind of had it oh you've had an audi r8 was my oh, dream fire. car i mean where do you, i guess where'd you go from there he's always like levels up i mean i think you know having a rolls royce color and this one would be sick. oh the cully my the mate one. tyler got lent one for a week mm-hmm. we we're driving that around mayfair the black badge like 450 oh, grand it's just car. Been motivation <laughs> Yeah, it is sick. But at the same time, I mean, to be, to be fair, now, the next car I get, I reckon I get a pink Tesla and wrap it with the Space Goods logo. That'd Ooh. be... That, wait, there's, like there's a way you can Kevin write it off there. No, for sure. Well, a Tesla's yeah. already Free right marketing. off because it's electric. And I, yeah, I think that'll actually be on brand as well because I want to get, yeah, like, that'd be hard. not this exact pink, but the exact like brand Pantone pink. That's just whatever promotion it is. That, that, yeah. 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 Free marketing, thing, bro. And yeah. then put this like moon logo, whatever you want to call it, yeah. on the roof. Oh, oh, that'd be so and then put like a QR code. Yeah, oh, la, la, la. I just think it would be like la. cringe a lot of people, but I think it would look sick. Nah, that'd be that'd be sick so, because people would like yeah. just take photos. Bro, it like, would turn heads, and that's yeah, what matters yeah. And, yeah. Like, eventually. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, what was I saying? Like, yeah, I've always loved cars, so it was never it was never an ego thing. But I think a lot of people probably thought it was, but whatever. Like, I mean, there's an element of it, like especially when I'm a bit younger. Like, it definitely attracts attention mm. in good and bad ways. Yeah, because I was in like a car club. With a bunch of older guys that, that I met through just having that car. So, yeah. like, there are ways that having something like that can actually kind of pay for itself, so to speak. Mm. But at the end of the day, like, driving around central London, like, like my, my mate Tyler's got a Hurricane Perthamante Spider. Oh, lovely. And he, he's getting rid of that now because even he said, like, geez, like, it's just a pain in the ass to drive. He seems like a headache. I get in tickets London. everywhere I go because yeah. people are, tr- you know, you, they think you're trying to cause trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, it, it's very cool. Like, I remember going on like a, a third date with my ex girlfriend. I picked her up in that Audi mm. R8, and you'd feel like a fucking taller. <laughs> but I mean, girls don't care about that shit. They honestly yeah, don't. Yeah. I yeah. swear to God that they care more about like sending them flowers. I'm taking notes it's, here, it's man. A small thing. <laughs> it's a small thing. No, seriously, I've yeah. learned that. And yeah, yeah, like it's cool for you. Like it's guys care about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's girls it. Don't it's care it's about the same it. with the gym. Yeah, I very feel. true. Yeah, no, yeah. the bigger you get, the more guys compliment. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, yeah. it's more the guys that compliment you, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. 
cars are cool and I'll definitely get another silly car again because I love cars I don't love the flex I've always just loved cars but there's definitely an element of it's like kind of out of my system a bit sort of mm. grand um, out of that flexy stage yeah I, I remember you talking about like um on that growth through podcast a while back you're talking about how one day you wanted to own a group of brands and that's yeah. how you like what you wanted your end goal to be right is that still the same yeah I can definitely see that like I I initially used to call my like group company like Infinity eighty five. So I, I had this mm. Infinity eighty five dot com and like Midnight and Neon ended up being the first two under that. And I don't know. I guess now, because because I always think like yeah, let's try and like make all the money in the world before thirty, whatever. Mm. Like mm-hmm. whether it's thirty one or twenty nine, whatever. You know, like it'd be nice to like be fully caked by thirty yeah, and like yeah. not have to worry about money ever again. Take care of your family, whatever X Y Z. But then it's like let's assume that happens because I'm sure it will what, you've got 50 more years of a career, what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah, like you need yeah. you need something to work on. Keep you grounded, isn't it? So, and, and then I think, well, hypothetically, I build space goods and sell it. There's got to be a next thing after that. And, and I don't know, I think a group of brands, because I've always worked on so many like brands and shit, like something mm. like the Hook Group. Mm. So the founder, Matthew Moulding, got the same first name, must be a sign. He's like 55, <laughs> billionaire. Okay. I'm sure he's not doing it for the money anymore. Do you know what I mean? Nah, nah. He, he, like, I mean, made all the money. Obviously, in the world. With, with space because like you bring value to your customers. You know what I mean? There's, there's real value there. I, I'm sure there is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think just finding and you, you hear it from a lot of successful entrepreneurs. Like I think George Heaton said it. Like it's about the mission and shit. And like Gary Vee obviously pushes that message a mm. lot. These guys have already made all the money, so it's probably easier to have that perspective. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But. Yeah, it's also like, I, I always think about this, like, so say someone sends you 100 million quid to your bank account tomorrow. Right, cool. W- what are you going to do tomorrow? You, mm. f- granted, you might, and like, how would you change your life from what, from what it is right now? Mm-hmm. For me, probably wouldn't change it much apart from I'd probably buy like 10 cars and I'd get my own podcast studio in like, you know, Mayfair yeah, and hard. like, whatever. But like, Polish it wouldn't everything. be yeah. that much that I'd probably do differently. Ultimately, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'd probably still do I mean, podcasts. Still, I still, still want to build a you. business. Yeah, like, I might just hire people a lot quicker and maybe be in the trenches slightly less. Mm. But when you actually like start to think about that, it's a bit scary. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck. Well, then I should probably work on the stuff that I would do then, now, anyway. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. But as a result, I'll probably end up having enough of an impact to yeah. actually make all that money, yeah. which isn't the thing that you chase in the first place anyway. Yeah. I don't know. That's, it's that's quite an interesting way of thinking about it. That's a mad perspective. Because people always think, and I've not made a hundred million quid at all, but not, you know, not yet, not that's, yet. that's like, <laughs> but people always think, just on like social media and shit, and like, and I, and I thought it myself and I spoke to my mates about it, you think like, then it's done. Like once I made yeah. the money, then it's done. Then, then I can start my life. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but no, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know. I think you should pursue something, and it's not all going to be fun and games at all, but like pursue something which is net like net passion. If it's like mm, if definitely. the ten percent of if the if ten percent of it that you love is worth it, it makes like the ninety percent bullshit, whatever. Because yeah. every business and job has good and bad parts. Obviously, everything. Yeah. Facts. But if it's like net good for your soul, then you should probably do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then I guess even when issues arise, like you know that you know, in the end it's it's you know, obviously when the issues are solved, you know, it's still still for you you know what i mean subconsciously you want to wake up in the morning and work on that project yeah. e- even though there's the cons that come with it yeah you exactly. want to get up and you want to do that task and you'll get it out the way because you want to do the next thing because that's actually your passion rather than oh i'm slaving away at this i just i don't want to do it anymore. was that what it was like with neon beach at the start yeah so the observation i had with all that shit was it went from like started being like a passion project and like loving the start and mm. it's kind of the same with midnight as well but that, that didn't go wrong so different but then I just found myself like, even when it was going quite going well before yeah. everything like hit the fan, I wasn't doing the bits I enjoyed anymore because suddenly I had like a team of thirty people in the Philippines, which ultimately reported to me. I had to, you know I had to step back and think about like oh I'm a business owner rather than, rather than just like a creative True. making some shit. Yeah. So I mean, like, there's always gonna be an element of if you're trying to build a big business, like you, you probably can't just do like. I'm not going to just do like logo design. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. you have to build a fundamental understanding. But yeah, what was the question? Fuck. I mean, like, like we're with Neon Beach, right? When yeah, like it, first it, time it went we from wake being up every like day, enjoyable like, yeah. to becoming less enjoyable, but the money was there, so it was like exciting. Mm-hmm. To then just being a fucking hellhole for like six months. Right, right, right. What, what kind of role would you want to work in now in terms of your own business, like space goods? 
if you had all of the systems in place and then yeah you know, honestly kind of like, like i feel like where i'm best and i, I think i'm probably better than most people at this at, at my stage and like age and experience level is just kind of the ideas guy and like like i said like zero to one yeah i think mm. i can do it in any mm -hmm. industry yeah to an extent like the creative vision i suppose right. um i guess broadly speaking that's kind of like all the front end stuff i love mm. Back end speaking. stuff, yes. And like, you know, yeah. and I've built up enough of an understanding for like back end stuff, like, you know, mm. barcoding, 3PO, all the stuff that no one fucking talks about in any mm. e com stuff. No they all talk about ad spend. No one talks mm. about. Yeah. Mm. It's all about ROAS. No one talks yeah. about like yeah. customer service automation they or don't. like don't. dealing with agencies or cash flow because it's fucking scary and boring. I mean, a lot of people don't get there. No. Honestly. Yeah. Or at least in, in our industry, I guess. Like, True. So, yeah, I, I guess I'd like to just focus on the front end stuff. And, and probably the one thing I realized as well, which is why I want to spend less time just sat at a fucking computer is I want to do it with more people, mm. which is why I like the podcast because I find the most enjoyable time is just sitting fucking speaking about shit I'm interested in, not even necessarily doing it, just talking about yeah. it. Like a social project sort of thing, so you all kind yeah. of build it together. Yeah, like one thing I was thinking as well, and I mean, I'm probably getting so busy now, but like my focus now is the podcast and the new brand, yeah. and I think they tie in nicely together, but I'd like to do some charity thing. I don't know. I was thinking about setting up a charity called Rock Bottom. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know how I'd position it. I don't know how it would work financially, technically, whatever. But, like, some element of the brand, are basically, like, a charity to support the mental health of entrepreneurs. Because yeah. I think it's such... Like, mental health for young people in this generation, particularly, like, post-COVID, is, is fucking challenging for everyone. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But I think even more so... I, I would say I'm someone that struggled with, like, poor mental health my entire life, to be honest. But then it's made even worse by the stresses of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And it's like, it's a recipe for a fucking disaster. Yeah, 100%. Um, and yeah, I, th I don't know. I'd like to potentially have some positive impact in in that way. I think that'd be amazing. Because yeah, as far 100%. as I know, there's nothing, there's nothing like that. Yeah, like, it's very yeah, like even People if don't it's even just, think about it. No, you know, exactly. Even if it starts with, I don't know, once a month, there's a fucking pop-up event that's free to come to and just fucking guys and girls like young entrepreneurs come to and just get like free advice they can network and shit network, like, i don't know yeah. whatever it's like it's paid for by the yeah. charity that sort yeah. of thing i don't know i don't know what it could be specifically but that's probably like a cause i care about beyond just making the fucking money but again you need the money and to build a business yeah. to facilitate that Definitely. which is the thing that i think a lot of people lose sight of like you don't want to yeah. be the, the starving artist no. which, which is why it's kind of funny because i've had like debates with people like i'm not a socialist at all but I completely emphasize with, and I, so I'm definitely a capitalist and I'm, I'm not saying I'm a Tory or anything, but <laughs> what this is going on a bit of a tangent, but like, I find it funny when you get people that went, have, clearly have a very privileged upbringing. I call them champagne socialists. They've right. never worked. They've never, you know, what, maybe they've got some grad job that the, their dad slinged them, you know. Mm. And they love and to empathize. They love the to rest. hate on entrepreneurs that are trying to make money and build yeah, something. Yeah, and yeah. so you need to pay more taxes. But then they go to, back to their four million pound house and sorry, yeah, yeah, having yeah. never paid tax themselves in their life, exactly. having never created anything. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm kind of taking the piss out of those people because they annoy me. But I believe like capitalism and like people like Elon Musk, like that's why I, I don't think you should necessarily tax entrepreneurs and wealthy people way more. I mean, it's a way bigger debate. But, you know, those people probably doing better having a better impact than the government ever could anyway like yeah. for example one thing i don't get and i don't know if i could ever do anything about it is i walk through london why is there homeless people like genuinely why mm. do homeless people yeah. exist yeah. why can yeah, they not yeah, go yeah. somewhere how can we have a state where the nhs is free yeah like, um, like, which is an amazing thing like go to america <clears throat> it's a shit show yeah yet i mean i, I don't know the, the economics behind it but it just strikes me as like how is that a thing yeah it's stuff like the, the grenfell tower they didn't like facilitate any of the victims, but they did Big Ben with eight eight million pounds. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah a, I think stuff shit, like that. Shit, it's very. It's that's where it's like I'm a capitalist, hundred percent. But that sort of shit pisses me off. I think like where are they spending this? It's just very questionable. Where are your priorities at the end of the day? That's my. But then uh, yeah. what's going on like behind the scenes? Yeah. Oh, I mean that's like whole conspiracy shit. Isn't yeah. It? Like, I'm pretty. Yeah. It's all corrupt, man. It's all yeah, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not gonna get demonetized. Like, even COVID <laughs> and shit. I mean, that's a whole other no, fucking story. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just found it mad how, like, obviously, like COVID affects a lot of people. But I mm. think men the mental health side of things had a negative effect on more people than COVID. It was, it, it it was overlooked. Yeah. It was overlooked. Massively 100%. overlooked. 
particularly for people that run like physical businesses like restaurants i don't know how the fuck they even got through that yeah yeah i couldn't even begin to imagine but it's kind of weird because if you look at some forward thinking countries like the scandinavian countries they they have literally no or the, is i think it's more to do with the um law system than anything like they they actually try and help people rather than penalizing people for true addictions that that's kind of the main mm. vicious cycle with people that end up on the streets usually mm. yeah it's usually either debt or drugs or the a mixture of both that, yeah. that usually cause that kind of cycle but yeah yeah like it gets that bad where homeless people actually commit crimes just to get a yeah. room in prison and get that food every day and stuff like that. It's it's it's, yeah, just, it's, broken. it's just broken. It's isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if we can fix that, but yeah, I guess I'd like to have try and think I could have some impact. Yeah, yeah, like socially as well. Um, Even if you help like a hundred people like during your lifetime, at least you've actually helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like impacted stuff, yeah. it like positively and actually changed their life. That's a kind of outlook that I'd kind of think with that, with that it's a good route like purpose wise yeah. you know what I mean 100%, 100%. yeah yeah so I suppose like I was thinking about this as well like because speaking to Iman like he's so Iman Gadzi for people that don't know he's on my pod like he's incredibly like he's like a 40 year old man and he's 21 it's fucking mad but like he has like a clear life mission and shit and I started mm. thinking about like what's my life mission and, like jeez I don't know I, I don't know exactly but probably like when i think about like the business i'm trying to build like the podcast maybe i'd do a charity thing i don't know maybe having some sort of broader impact on like the mental health support of like creatives and entrepreneurs because that's what i feel like i am and that's yeah where i feel like i've struggled the most yeah and, and you're not alone like there's so many people that have that you know what yeah, i mean they probably haven't even spoken about it 100 percent. yeah that's, so that's, that's, that's why i'm so honest about it on 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 the pod and this pod so I respect that because it shows people the reality that not everything is rosy yeah. when it comes to businesses. Instagram is very detrimental oh, yeah. right yeah. now. Like very toxic. Yeah, 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 yeah. People just, it's, it's literally just it's, a, it's highlight. a highlight reel, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. And, but it's then people, you, like, mine's also a highlight reel, but yeah. I, I guess Twitter is a bit more like trying to share shit and like obviously like YouTube mm. videos What's and shit. What's on your mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because on YouTube, they can actually see what you are for you. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. obviously on Instagram, it's just like a few photos. Your life probably looks amazing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Let like, me stand by a roll, take a picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, legit. Like I fucking cried in my bedroom this week because I felt so shit. Mm, I don't shit. cry that often, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Was it just being like overwhelmed with everything? Oh, I think anxiety from the weekend, missing my ex-girlfriend, mm. <laughs> um, and then just oh, I don't know. It, it probably just a build up of things. Probably like PTSD yeah. to an extent because I'd never done that before. Probably, probably built up let it over out. time. Yeah, there must just be a lot of just stuff under the cover that you probably. Don't even like you don't even acknowledge that you, you know what I mean. Just obviously from yeah, because like, even I think lads are really bad at this. Like maybe girls as well, but I can only relate to guys. Like you'll speak to your mates, but you won't really speak to them. You yeah. won't let it all out. You you still hold stuff in. I'm I'm bad. I think that's just that. like I'm human really nature, particularly that. like male human nature. As but much as I try, I I just kind of it. like yeah. it. It kind of has a innate feeling that you feel weaker and. Less alpha, yeah, yeah, but that's is, 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 is that the whole the, Twitter thing, the whole yeah. alpha male. That's it. That's what I was about to say. Like, is, is, is it don't culture? Subscribe to it. Is, it. is that the reason why? Is it just because the culture? Kind of being, yeah, it's been definitely programmed into role. us. To be honest, yeah, yeah I, I just think, I think you know you're getting older and a bit more self-aware when, regardless of what stereotypes are thrown around on social media, you still know it's not you. Mm. So I had that realization with like the whole, like alpha and like money Twitter G thing. It yeah. just isn't me. Like, no. I don't want to call girls like hoes and shit. It's just not me. Yeah, no. Like, yeah, and don't get me wrong. Like, not every girl I've ever spoke to I've fallen in love with. But, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think it comes from, like, rap culture and shit as well. Oh, oh yeah, that plays 100%. a massive role. 100%. I don't know if you, like, listen to rap whilst you're working or do you try and stay? Yeah, I'm very eclectic music taste. Like, honestly, like, my favourite band is the 1975. Oh, because yeah. I, like, I've always just been obsessed with them from a musical perspective. And a lot of people would say that's, like, gay and shit or whatever, like... That's their opinion. I, I just think, I Matty, he- I think Matty Healy is just a creative genius. Uh, their aesthetic inspired a lot of the neon stuff I've done. Ah. I don't, I'd love to get him on the podcast. Like, awesome. I just, like, and I love like Drake and shit as well. I'm, I'm, but I like I like a broad range of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Like I literally listen to classical music. I listen to fucking death metal in the gym. Yeah, yeah same. Because I'm such death a musical metal, person. Like, mm. yeah. And then like like lo-fi beats. I love listening to when oh, working yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But I like music that makes me feel something. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I kind of like getting in my feels about like a, pa- a time gone by. Nah, it's, mm. it's a kind of way to cope with things. Or like, again, like how the podcast you can, you know, speak about whatever. Yeah. When you're listening to music and you can relate, it's like so therapeutic. Like, honestly, one of the most like beautiful life experiences I, I think I've had is just like, I used to do it all the time, just like a late night drive mm. through like London in a fast car with very loud music, just by yourself. Yeah. Or with someone else, but probably by myself. Just playing like somebody else by the night seventy five. Mine is just going off. Walking down the beach, earphones in, it, it, and preferably evening, and just just walk and just think. L- let it all out in your brain, and then yeah, I think that's really th- therapeutic on my part anyway. Yeah, because like I just associate certain songs so strongly with like certain times. Certain times, times. yes, yeah, certain yeah, songs, I get that. It's like, yeah, oh my yeah, god, it's, I'm it's, we were reminiscing room. on yeah, just songs yeah, yeah, from yeah, just like yeah. back in the day, yeah. just classics of like like rap wise. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. yeah, and I I, I, could, I could tell him where exactly I was yeah. when I was listening to that song. 100%. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So powerful. So it's like another thing as well. I feel like people, speak to my mate about this because he's also been going through like some romantic issues. Mm. <laughs> and and I, I was like, oh, when I listen to like certain songs, that makes me sad about this girl and shit. But then it's like, uh, if I put like future on in the gym, I like, oh, I feel like a fucking G again. Yeah, you feel like a boss straight <laughs> off the But yeah. it's like, there's a time and a place for that. But I think it's also good to like fucking feel shit. I don't know. Yeah. It's good but to let it out. It's man. kind of, it's, it's quite a nice feeling, like being nostalgic about something, and like, I don't know. I always think like nostalgia is like a beautiful sadness. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so agree. deep. But because yeah, I don't know, it's one of those. Not even just like girls and shit, but like times gone by. Like I, I think back to when I was like twenty two in like Bali or whatever, and it seems like such a beautiful period. You but can you never go but back. You don't realize it. Yeah, you at can the never time. go back. It's like a so staple of it. It'll like, be the same with this. I look back when I'm thirty and mm. like this time or whatever. Podcast era, yeah. Be, and like you almost get an awareness that the time you're in now is gonna have this like Shows it. retrospective yeah. movie filter, and it's gonna be a beautiful. Shows yeah. it. So yeah. many, so many things don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Like there's so many like little day to day things that are just they're not actually that deep. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like if, mm. if if you think about it, like you just have to just enjoy the present. That's the most important 100%. thing. You know what I mean? Enjoy the moment. That's it. Yeah, I get so deep about that. So I'll literally lie in bed at night and think like, fuck, like time's going by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always yeah, ticking, tick, tick, tick. It's almost scary, but it's like. That's again like um, what's it called? Existentialism. Yeah, it so is like existential mm. dread or something. I don't know if yeah. it's dread or just it's like awareness. Dread. Like it's pure awareness. It's like it? the awareness of the fragility of time. And yeah. Do you life. know the term nihilism? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when? What does that mean? Literally, when like you think nothing actually matters. Like we're on this rock in this black abyss. Just mad, just you spinning. can use that to your advantage. You can, yeah. You can. Yeah, I guess nothing matters, but then it means that everything matters. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You have to exactly. give it meaning. Yeah. Like it's, it's almost like what's the meaning of life? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's <laughs> all so fucked that we may as well just try and Be try and live through. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like the most beautiful things in life, I think, are just like giving me giving meaning to things. I don't know. Yeah. You, you you give it your did, own meaning. Did you learn anything more about like yourself or anything like maybe? These type of topics, obviously, when you tested psychedelics. Oh, jeez. I mean, yeah, so I, I've dabbled, not a huge, I'm not a psychonaut by any fucking means, but I think I said this on the Eman pod as well. My experience with psychedelics in legal countries is like, I described it, and I think it was such a good description actually in hindsight, and it was off the cuff. And I was like, drinking alcohol or whatever drugs is yeah. like an up, then you get a down, and then you come back to base level. And mm. this is base level. Mm-hmm. My perception of psychedelics, broadly speaking, is instead of going up or down, you go out and in. Right. Ooh. And there is no come down or whatever. Right, it's right, just right. out and then you're off. Okay. So if this is like this axis, you know what I mean? Mm. It goes out on the other axis. That's, that's like a different perspective. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. That's really how I'd describe it. Um, and yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't think I could handle it, you know. I mean, again, I, I'm not like I'm not a fucking expert in that because like I, I listen to a lot of shit about like ayahuasca and like DMT, oh, yeah, which I've never done by <laughs> the way, and that's like Bad. really that's like god level shit. And they say like you leave your body, and mm, yeah. I've never done that shit. I'd Jesus. quite like to try it. Like this guy called Dan Murray Serto runs a brand called Heights, which is a cool brand, kind of a competitor. It's a great, it's a great name to be fair. Yeah, it's, it's semi competitor, but it's a cool brand. Um, and he speaks a lot about how he's done like ayahuasca. Like I think he said like once a year for the past like ten years. <sighs> And he said it's an incredibly emotionally painful experience, but it's so therapeutic because it like brings up. Oh, this is what I kind of want to try. It said it like brings up, I don't know, like child trauma, and you can like heal and shit. Do you think? Do you think you'll try it? Probably at some point. 
you know? I don't know. I, I, so like, yes. you just got to be ready. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, but how but do you know when you're ready? You, you hear it, horror it. stories about this shit, but then you also hear like enlightenment stories. Yeah. yeah. I've heard people like people say that you just stay in that trip forever. It's like a yeah, double-edged like, sword. Someone said that they were in it for like, it felt like they've lived a lifetime. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, what? mad, you know. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they're it stuck for a whole lifetime worth of... I think I just panic in that. I don't, well, I can't really say much. I haven't done it, so... No. Yeah, it's mad. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. I don't even know. Yeah. The whole brain is like a lot... I don't know. Like, I'm not religious, but I, I definitely think there's like... There has to be something there more, has to be than, something just more than just science. Yeah. Because yeah, there's yeah, like... Yeah, um, yeah. When, when you die, you release DMT. Like, yeah. So, obviously, everyone says, oh, they, I've had, like, a near-death experience and their life flashes before mm. their eyes. So that's usually, that why? Mm-hmm. That's usually yeah. DMT yeah, yeah, yeah. releasing wow. from your brain. Yeah. Uh, then people, like, come back and they say, yeah, I've seen Jesus. But usually it's probably something we played in our past. Yeah, uh, it's hard to, like, stay, obviously, because... Yeah, it's mad. I find that shit so interesting, all of it. really interesting. And people have, like, they've, they've signed up to have their body weighed. Like, th- they know they're about to die. They're, like, terminally ill. And, like, there's a minute difference like when they pass away and that could be their soul something like, no one yeah, knows so there's a, a change it's like the exact same Jesus. like difference in mm. weight they've they've done it across like the soul weighs yeah. a certain amount like, you know. weird like, it's weird to think about because it's it, realistically it's your it's your ego trying to your ego saying it's weird because we don't know anything else yeah 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 outside as if it's widely known the, the general thought we just accept it if that was just a widely known fact but no one actually gets to that point where they can, you know what I mean, yeah. t- live to tell the tale. Or yeah, if they do, crazy. then, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. That's, that's There's those are conspiracy theorists. Like, oh, yeah, I died and came back to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this and that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, but, <sighs> I don't know. Oh, fuck. This is the thing that like, you'll just never know. You, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you'll yeah, just never know will. until you know. That's the beauty of life, though. Yeah, that, 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 that is the beauty of life. Like, you don't yeah. know what's next. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, when you think about like what is outside the universe, you literally can't, your brain doesn't work. Yeah, you, you can't, can't compute even, it. You can't even th- fathom it's like, it's like when it. Like, what the fuck is all this? Isn't, isn't it like colours or something? Oh, it's mad. What, what I, I, I always think it? how small everything is in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Like this mic is absolutely tiny. But then but to us, it's like a molecule that makes the mic is even smaller. I, yeah. There's like levels in there. And it's yeah, identical yeah, yeah, yeah. to the patterns of the universe. Yeah, because everything just gets smaller. Oh, that is what's crazy. Ah. <laughs> and also the, the how we percept everything is built on radio waves which are technically energy so like realistically we can't see past certain spectrums or hear yeah. past certain mm. spectrums like there's studies that are saying like if you cut a plant it screams but we can't hear oh, it. oh yeah I've, yeah I've like joe rogan like posted some shit about like plants that look like birds and it makes you think like yeah it's all fucking connected man yes yeah, s- s- something mad is going on and, like the fibonacci <laughs> yeah. sequence as well that's like, it the 61.8 yeah like and everything's like mathematical yeah. yeah but then it's like what came first like maths or <laughs> yeah. I don't know I don't it makes know me think I'm just living in a simulation yeah. oh bro I always like, like yeah, 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 what's literally. wrong with living in a simulation if that's all we know like realistically yeah very true like there's a high level chance that we're in a simulation it's well, gone off, it's gone off but well. no, that, that one's fine um, one's so but right. like who cares there's, yeah like just make make the most of it yeah that's, that's how you have to play think. the game yes. yeah exactly yeah, like, ah. it's weird. Like we, we're literally starting to go into yeah. simulation within a simulation metaverse. Yeah. with the metaverse. Yeah. Like you're not involved in any of that stuff, are you? Crypto, well, NFTs. Not really. Um, it's probably an area that for the first time I feel like fuck, like this shit's new. Like mm. uh, yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, it's like NFTs and shit. I think like ninety nine percent of it's a scam. Yeah. And like in terms of all these projects and so on, but I think it will become just another avenue to like do business and. Yeah. exist do you know what I mean yeah. have do you, you seen think? any integration with space goods yeah. well like, I mean pff, there's nothing I've specifically planned but like like in like bay common sense I think like sh- surely it gets to the point where like, you can try the flavour of something in the metaverse do you know what I mean that's Whoa. I'm, pretty sure. Whoa. <laughs> they do. I'm pretty sure they have something where you can like so, like the really easier yeah. application is like clothes like you'll be able to try on yeah. a pair of something and it'll be accurate yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 that's where I see like the metaverse but I, I don't think I personally I don't think you can replace like human contact with a fucking meeting in the metaverse yeah i just don't like it's yeah. better than a zoom call maybe yeah, yeah, but you get a sore head from wearing yeah. the vr headset exactly so, yeah. exactly yeah. i feel like yeah like the internet like obviously the internet is probably one of the other huge things which has happened in recent times let's say where i guess it's sort of like changed the world but the metaverse take it even a step further with like the goals it has to sort of like mm. change reality so world like, the internet world. did not change you know what i mean like that's probably the maddest thing is the internet but 
for the metaverse to change reality. I don't, that's never been done before, and but I don't think a lot it's of stuff is like possible. NFTs are just going to be applica- like applications are within the real world rather than just on the metaverse. Like in, in terms of just, it's pretty much just have like saying you have a receipt, yeah. except yeah. it's just digital, and it's yeah, a lot easier that. for proof of concept, like the, or proof of authenticity, yeah. all yeah, of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure. StockX will probably implement something like that. Oh so yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, there's already t- uh, there's already um, digital real estate in the metaverse, which is crazy. I, I think. don't see the point in that, to be honest. Yeah, like, certain fuck, things. I think what the fuck's just going build on. one on Minecraft, isn't it? Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. My, yeah. my house in Minecraft is worth fourteen million. So <laughs> fourteen ETH. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's mad you still can't feel it. It's like. It's, it's it's still not a real woman in the metaverse. You get all these like you get all these incels. So I have <laughs> like, getting all these girls in the metaverse. I really want to speak to someone no. who's like fully invested in the idea of the metaverse. Like why? Uh, unless it becomes it? like h- human realistic, maybe. How? I don't know. But then like look at because then you're Xbox playing with science. Twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Look at the first iPhone. What fourteen years I, ago? I said this to you the other day. Literally, the first iPhone was fourteen. And now years you can ago. make a cinematic film on a phone. Yeah, and now everybody. So think got about one of these, the. Yeah exponential yes yeah, but then your feelings even when you're playing a video game it's still you that you feel you don't, it's not your character that feels you know what i mean yeah so i guess you still never out, get out of you know what i mean reality obviously you can get lost in the game you can yeah but you can't like actually be in the game yeah so true um crazy because it's going to build its own ecosystems anyway and kind of be self-sufficient in terms of like, i think it's going to be really good in like the gaming industry so obviously my dad's in the gaming industry mm. so he, he knows quite well like mm very reliant on dopamine releases but imagine instead of having to pay you like to get a certain thing you can earn it with built-in crypto it's kind of a crazy idea like yeah play to earn I feel weird even talking about this because i don't know a thing about it yeah. you know what I, mean? I feel so unqualified yeah, yeah, to yeah, talk yeah. about this Same. 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 um it's crazy shit. yeah no i feel like just in general um i'm happy with obviously what, everything we touched on i crazy. feel like we're at a good spot now uh, and again i really do appreciate you for coming yeah, on thank you again like That's this this is Podcast that, yeah, no, I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gassed to do this one, you know what I mean? Yeah, Especially, yeah. obviously, I can ask you questions which I had e commerce wise, everything wise about your journey. There's a lot that I've learned from you today. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on. But yeah, anyway, just yeah, the general. podcast will be in the description. Yeah, yeah, all Check of his links will be in the description yeah, 100%. Check that out, um, check that but yeah, thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that. Um, yeah, subscribe, yeah. man. Please, yeah, please, please. please. Um, we'll see you next Saturday for the next pod. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Peace. Bye.